<clears throat> okay, hopefully we are live on the internet. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the role of play here on the Virginia Tech University Libraries Studios channel. My name is Kira Dietz. I am the Assistant Director of Special Collections and University Archives. If you've watched our stream before, you've probably seen me as a player and as a GM, because I like games. And way back at the end of January, I DM'd the little 5e game here on the channel called The Adventure of the Artifact Heist, based on some of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's um, Sherlock Holmes stories. And the party met with some success, but there were a lot of questions and there were some still some lost items. Uh, and so in a minute, I'm gonna have our players introduce themselves and their characters since we do have a new player joining us tonight. And then we'll do a quick recap of part one if you didn't join us for that and we're not able to catch up on that. And then we will dive into part two because as it turns out, a mysterious note has appeared a few more items have gone missing, and Lord Rivergleam of Neverwinter has reasons to perhaps be a bit more forthcoming than he was. Uh, so welcome to Adventure of the Artifacts, part two. Uh, and I will uh, randomly call on someone to introduce themselves. I guess I'll go top left and around. So Nathaniel, that makes you first. <laughs> All right, I'm Nathaniel Porter, he, him. Uh, I'm the Social Science Data Consultant and Data Education Coordinator in the University Libraries, that means uh, my job is to play with everybody's data, their surveys and things, um, and try and magically make it work the way they hoped it would, with varying degrees of success. Once in a while we roll a one and we can't do much about it. Um, my character is Rocky. He is an Earth Ganazi, barbarian of the wild magic path. Um, he grew up uh, hiding in the corners of the streets of Neverwinter, um, just sort of blending in. He doesn't like to talk a lot, although last time he ended up the center of attention for a good chunk of <laughs> things going on because it's hard to hide when you're a giant earth barbarian and uh, does not take kindly when people mess with the earth. Uh, then we will jump over to Jeff. Hello. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, I am Jeff Pedersen. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And um, my connection to the library or to Virginia Tech is number one, I'm a graduate of the program, but currently I am a teacher at Blacksburg High School where I teach history and I throw my students into all kinds of simulations and games and escape rooms. And so we play all the time um, with all kinds of things. Um, tonight I will be continuing to play uh, Lis Ashheim. He's a high elf rogue slash wizard, so multi-class. Um, he goes by Ash. He's a little bit of a gentleman rogue, I guess you would say, rakish character. He grew up near high society, but uh, found his way to the streets for a while, and he's especially interested in acquiring magical objects and information. And Good thing we have a lot of that ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we have a new player joining us tonight, Sarah. So if you tuned in last time, we had uh, Jen Park was playing Jeswin. Uh, she could not join us, and so we're doing a little cast change, and we are welcoming a new character into our party. So, Sarah, go ahead. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, she, her. So, I am a doctoral student um, in the School of Education for Curriculum and Instruction in Social Sciences. So, last year, I was a history teacher. Yeah. <laughs> um, and play uh, is actually a part of my research. Um, I am interested in games and simulations in the classroom, so it's really exciting to hear someone does that here. Um, we'll probably be having a chat about that. Um, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for uh, a few years now, and I absolutely love board games. I play board games quite a bit. Um, my character is Friar Pip. Um, Friar Pip was orphaned as a lad and taken in by monks at a monastery. 
Um, so like me, he is a scholar, except um, he's mostly involved in like the mead making, beekeeping side of the monastery. Um, so not really feeling like, you know, a super academic type. Um, he um, actually escaped into the Feywild um, and has been living in the Seely Court for many, many years. Um, he's a druid, a halfling druid. Um, and so now he's popped back into a different plane of existence after being with the Fey for quite a long time. And he's ready for an adventure. And he also started out on a different plane of existence, as I recall, unless you have changed your backstory. So. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's right. Um, he is from, like, our world, 12th century our world. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit of traveling. Uh, yeah. He has done, and a bit more to come. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, Alex. With Finn in the background. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> my name is Alex Kinnaman. She, her. Uh, this is Finn. He just woke up. He may need to escape uh, at some point this evening because uh, otherwise he will scream at us. Um, so I am the digital preservation coordinator at the university libraries and play as it applies to work is uh, pretty abstract for me. I do a lot of policy and documentation work. So for me, it's like a puzzle and to others, I'm extremely boring, um, but I like it. <laughs> but we do play a lot of tabletop games at home and I used to play a lot of second ed, so there's a lot of um, useless information I've needed to like purge to begin <laughs> to learn how to play 5e. It's been a real transition for me. Uh, my character is Elena, uh, she, her. She is a dissipator tiefling, so she hails from the city of Dis, which is in Hell's second lair. And she is supposed to be an excellent spy, although if you uh, witnessed round one, uh, it didn't go very well. She was off chasing butterflies somewhere, um, was pretty out of it, and then got paralyzed by a poison. So she was doing real great. We're hoping for uh, another opportunity to show off her skills. But she is also an artificer, and this is a this is a new race for, or excuse me, a class for me. And as we've kind of explored the class itself, um, the impression is that it's better for longer campaigns so we're, we don't get to really explore it as much in this game but she has some uh, cool spells and magical infusions she is generally very suspicious of people and follows her own code of conduct and she's lawful evil but she follows her own code <laughs> so she's a tad bit particular um she doesn't really like people all that much but she finds value in human life and in sharing knowledge and intelligence uh, to her own gain, obviously. But she's also interested in that uh, exploration of knowledge in general. <laughs> so she's excited to not Every to be a better spy this time. Everybody wants the magic items and the info, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for uh, we'll do a quick recap and the three of you who played in our last stream if you would like to uh, jump in and interrupt me or add to the story at any point feel free to do so um, but your your setup last time <laughs> was we're gonna have lots of guests tonight animal and otherwise um, so your set the setup last time was our four players were part of a mercenaries guild in Neverwinter um, the guild had been contacted about a contract for uh, Lord Keegan River Gleam of Neverwinter, who some people knew him. Uh, he has a bit of a reputation as a collector of interesting items. And he, uh, as he calls it, his gallery of gizmos. Uh, and so our party was invited to come to his home and maybe learn a little bit more detail about what had happened. Uh, people knew that materials were disappearing from his gallery, but he was not particularly forthcoming about the how or why. And uh, over the course of things, he uh, gave you all an amulet that would, as he put it, allow you to do, uh, to track down some of these missing items. Uh, it would take you to whatever plane they happen to be on and put you near the item with some, you know, relative location. And you would have to find them and hopefully retrieve them. So you took the amulet in hand and you all went off on an adventure. You found yourselves uh, first in... I keep getting the order wrong because you, you successfully in the end retrieved three different items. Uh, so the first stop on your tour, I believe, was to 
Was it Arborea that you went to first? I don't know. No, See, Arborea was, was second. Arborea was second. Yes. It was Arcadia that you all went to first, uh, and you found yourself in a rather interesting palace of the Summer Queen uh, and in a treasure room, which was a big temptation for several of you. <laughs> Uh, but you did, in fact, find an item there that looked like a coin attached to a thumb. And you took this item uh, along with you, and nobody bothered to try and figure out what it was, and you bounced to your next location, uh, which, as you pointed out, was Arcadia, or Arborea, um, where you encountered some elves in the woods, uh, some of you more stealthily than others. <laughs> and uh, through a series of negotiations and riddling, found yourselves with the tiny portrait of a woman uh, in locket form. And you took that along with you and bounced off to your third and final stop on the tour last session, <laughs> uh, which was the Plain of Mechanus, where you did in fact find a very strange uh, set of quadrones and duodrones and had yourselves a fight. Some people maybe got paralyzed. <laughs> Uh, some people <laughs> did a lot of extra force damage. It was real cool. Uh, and you found yourselves with a set of drawings for what, thankfully, your artificer was able to, although strange as it sounded, uh, seemed to be plans for some sort of boat that went under the water. Uh, but you really didn't have a chance to explore that as there was no water nearby. Um, you found yourselves jumping back to Neverwinter and actually returned where you started in the Gallery of Gizmos. Uh, much to Lord R River Green Gleam's uh, glee, you returned with some of his items. Some people maybe tried to keep some of those items <laughs> uh, a little less than successfully. And while he was still not really forthcoming in, with information or interested in answering your questions, he was intrigued by the fact that you were able to find three of these missing items. You did know that there were seven. Uh, and he invited you all to sort of uh, go, you know, take a rest and maybe come back in about a week and he would talk to you about, you know, maybe retrieving some more of these items. Um, anybody want to add anything to that? Any, any highlights you want to point out that I should <laughs> go back over while I get to the top of my notes? No, I'm just ready to okay. get back into it. So with that in mind, um, Three of you, uh, and three of you manage, and, and in the course of your last, uh, actually, in your last stopover, uh, your fourth party member was recalled for another mission, so it's important to point out that's why we've had a little bit of a changing cast. So while you have managed to return a few of Lord River Gleam's missing artifacts, you know that several are still missing, and he seemed anxious to have them back. Um, of course, for some of you, there's also the compelling mystery of this whole strange tale that he wove for you about this guy in a place called London and how he solved mysteries. Um, and then there's the compelling fact that River Gleam was a little less than forthcoming. So three of you went your separate ways to rest up and think on the situation since he seemed to be offering you more work, uh, mentioning to come back in about a week. You're just starting to feel a little less beat up uh, from your strange encounter in Mechanus uh, when each of you receives a new note from the guild master, Nesra Stormbreaker. <clears throat> Uh, only two days later. She seems to impress upon you that you need to get to headquarters for the guild as quickly as possible, stating only that she has a new note from Lord, R R Lord River Gleam, uh, which requires immediate attention. You know that she's likely only empathetic or sympathetic to a cause when there is a great deal of coin at stake. So, maybe this is intriguing in its own right. When you arrive, she tells you that Jesswin is still on the previous assignment, but she's found someone else in the guild with a skill set that might just come in handy. Though, as she puts it, that dang nobleman is still being vague about everything again. So she gestures to Friar Pip, who all of you have worked with at least once or twice before, uh, though it's been a while. In her other hand, she's waving a fancy piece of parchment uh, with the familiar River Gleam seal at the bottom. It simply says, Stormbreaker, circumstances changed. Meet adventurers with all haste preferably those ones from before. No time for beat details. This business is getting absurd and I won't stand for it. It seems now he's decided to taunt me further. Money is not a concern. <clears throat> Nesra, seemingly sympathetic or generous, or more likely she sees her cut of the gold, uh, suggests that you stop by Halos, the quartermaster, on your way out. She's told him to put some things aside from you, for you. Uh, and after all, you're potentially more used to her alive. 
Um, but despite the rush, before you do anything, it might be wise to take a few minutes to get reacquainted with your new companion and perhaps bring them up to speed if you would like to do so. If there's anything else you would like Friar Pip to know as you head into this adventure that we did not cover in the recap, now is a good time. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the no. other thing, yeah. Uh, and one other thing, for those of you who were on this adventure before, we're going to jump right in. Um, go ahead and roll a charisma saving throw. So just to let our uh, viewers know, we are using uh, D&D Beyond, but we don't have a dice cam tonight. So we will do our rolls and we will try to remember oh. to share our rolls with you. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, as you can tell from expressions, some things maybe are not going too great. Uh, <laughs> That's an so, eight for me. Twelve okay. for me. Uh, okay. A zero so, for me. <laughs> natural one. Oh, no. A natural one minus one. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> Elena and Ash, you have a moment as you're standing here now that you're back together where you sort of think back about your experience in Arborea, and while some things went wrong, it, it seemed like a pretty nice place, and, you know, maybe sometime you, you might want to go back there. Uh, Rocky, you can't get this place out of your head. It is, it, it was as strange as your adventure was and your experience of being put on the spot to perhaps be the face of a party in a way you've never had to before, and maybe because of that. You find yourself coming back to a, a yearning and an intensity and a desire as an Earth Genasi to visit this place again. Um, mechanically speaking, you are currently making ability checks with disadvantage. Mm. <laughs> um, well, I didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you all um, go ahead and roll an intelligence check. Um, I would say Elena and uh, Ash, and uh, even Friar Pip, you may have some knowledge of this, even though your scholarship is related largely to <laughs> bees and other things. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> uh, a uh, 17 for me. 17 for you. Okay. 22 for me. Ooh. I know. Oh, well, it looks like you rolled a save, so that's oh, higher than you want to roll check. a check, not a save. So I was like, that seems, seems real. a little too <laughs> high. Yes. yes. There we go. That's more like an Elena roll. Got a nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and a 12. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Ash, not surprisingly, because you have learned a little bit and had to think about some things based on your experiences uh, and, and the knowledge that you had from before, you do know that people who go planes hopping sometimes have consequences. Sometimes those consequences are immediate to your experience there, or may, maybe you don't have any problems. Sometimes they come later. Um, and you sort of think back and you do know, in fact, that there is a, an old story that if you were to go to Arborea and come back, that you would find yourself desirous of going to this place. Um, mechanically speaking, at the end of each long rest, Rocky can attempt to repeat this saving throw. Um, or a Dispel Good and Evil spell will actually uh, get rid of this problem right away. Not sure that anybody has that. Hmm. But mechanically speaking, that you know what has happened to Rocky, and you know how to solve it, whether or not you have those resources immediately available, you're not sure. Well, I will convey that information sort of absentmindedly uh, <laughs> as I ask for the paper, the parchment, uh, mm -hmm. From Lord from Desra, River. yeah, and okay, yeah, she'll give it to you. And I would like to perform an investigation check to see if there's any any hidden information, anything else that might be on there. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Uh, there it is. That's a seventeen. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you have a good eye for detail, but you really don't think that there's anything particular about this note. Okay. Given his reticence to be forthcoming, you're not sure why he would put them in a note to Nesra that he's more likely to maybe convey information to you when you get there. Okay. 
Um, do you all want to stop by the quartermaster on your way out, as as Nesra has suggested, or or, or and or do you want to uh, attempt to figure out how to help Rocky? <laughs> I'm gonna be totally honest. Did not think anyone would fail that. <laughs> How you doing, Rocky? <laughs> A little grumbling. Oh no. <laughs> just really likes that place. Really wants yeah. to go back. Seems to be the the focus of attention to the point of distraction. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well. Is he, is he the brain trust of our planning? Or is he going to be okay? <laughs> He'll be fine. I'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Just give him some things to swing at and I'll be fine. Okay. All right, perfect. Ash is definitely not at all concerned about, like, the whole thing was literally absent-minded. He's sort of like... Already. Yeah, he's he's okay. ready to go. So. Okay. So if you swing by the quartermaster, which I highly recommend, hint, hint, uh... <laughs> You, uh, Hallows the Quartermaster, who you are all well acquainted with. He's actually a halfling as well, uh, Friar Pip. So you are, you probably hang it. Maybe you're pretty well acquainted hang out sometimes. Um, each of you gets a standard potion of healing. So keep, keep it, keep that in mind. Keep track of that. I do believe you all got one last time. So if you did not use it, some of you may have two. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, but I don't know how much we were keeping track of inventories because we thought that was a one shot. I don't remember who drank theirs if they had when they because I know everybody got one, but I don't remember who drank them. Uh, and he is also holding something else in his hand, uh, and he he looks at it and he sort of looks at you all excitedly and he goes, you know, she doesn't she doesn't give stuff like this out. This is this must be a big deal, whatever it is. What uh, is it? And he's holding a, a sort of plain looking wand. Uh, it is, it's brown and sort of long and it tapers. It looks like it's just made of wood. Um, but the handle at the very bottom, uh, looks a little bit like, almost like a miniature doorknob. Interesting. Um, and, uh, let's see. Uh, go ahead and make Arcana checks. Anybody, particularly anybody who's very knowledgeable in Arcana. Which I know at least. Nice. Woo! Four. Yes. Fourteen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we gotta we gotta give we'll give Ash a chance. Twenty four. All right. Uh, so the three of you look at this and you're like, I know what this is. This is a wand of secrets. Um, this has uh the way that uh, if you're not familiar with a wand of secrets, uh, because you all rolled so high, you would actually all know what this is and what it does. Um. It is a, it's a wand, but if you point it at, uh, if you activate it, essentially, if you activate it, it um, has three charges and it will show you. So if you choose to use an action to activate it, you will, uh, it will tell you if there is a secret door or a trap within 30 feet of you and it will point you in the direction. It will flash and sort of point you in the direction. So it has three charges per day and it resets at dawn. So you are getting it fresh uh, with three charges. Uh, somebody can hold on to that. You all can decide who. I think I should hold on to this. No, 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 no. I think I should hold on to <laughs> no, this. No, no. Last time you tried to steal artifacts. I, I did not. not I did not try to steal an artifact. I've watched it happen. I'm I... taking the wand. Can Pip just, like, while they're arguing, just try to, like, oh, okay, and I'll hold on to that. Uh, go ahead and roll a dex check or a sleight of hand. Uh, okay. You can try and stealth it away. Okay, they're both the same. So. <laughs> and that's. Uh, I was gonna have the other two of you roll um, roll for perception checks. Uh, so go ahead and do that. But I, I suspect that you're probably gonna <laughs> catch on to this. I mean, <laughs> my passive. That. My, yeah, I was gonna say your pa both of you have very high passives. My passive you see is this 17, immediately. But I'll, as, I'll uh, yeah. roll just because. Oh, <laughs> yeah. of course not. Uh, Elena's passive is high enough too, though. Uh, you both see that that uh, Friar Pip is trying to grab hold of this thing. Is the quartermaster just like holding it too high? I can't. He, reach. He's trying to. Well, he's actually about your height. He's okay. a halfling, so he's right. actually trying to hold it lower so that until you all decide who uh. gets it. He's trying to keep it away from the tall people and sort of off to one side. Cool. 
And he says, quick, you better make a decision or she's going to take it back. Rock, paper, scissors. No, I just go and take it. (laughs) He's like, look, you fight about it all you want. Just take it now. Maybe get a move on before she catches on. She's going to get cranky. You know how she gets. Yeah, I'm I'm just, I'm going to politely take it from him. I'm impatient to get moving. Okay. Get back. Okay. I I will let her take it, but as soon as I see an opportunity... I'm going to try to swipe it back. Okay, so as you collect your supplies and I, as you start to leave the guild hall, you actually hear Nessera yelling, I expect that one back at the end of this job. It's just a loner. And there's this moment of pause, and then she goes, Ash, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> your reputation um, precedes you. <laughs> um, what would you like to do? Presumably make your way to the River Gleam Estate, but that is up to you. <laughs> Uh, Friar Pip, you would also know by now that the River Gleams are a pretty well-known family, and the estate is well-known. It's a short walk from here, so last time the party went there, they just sort of took a little morning hike. So y'all know it's a relatively short walk. Um, And as you arrive, much like the previous experience that some of you had, um, Lord River Gleam is waiting at the door for you. Not, Not his staff or anyone, he personally is waiting for you. And he seems exceptionally relieved to see you. Um, and he ushers you into the house. He doesn't say anything until he gets you, he, he sort of pushes you in the direction of the gallery. You know, several of you have been here, so you can sort of get get in that direction. Do we notice any, anything different along the way? Along the way, no. Okay. Uh, as you get closer to the gallery, which as you may or may not recall, is sort of towards the back of the house. So he's leading through, leading you through the main hall. Um, this is a well-decorated house with big portraits of dead river gleams and all that stuff. Um, you do notice that there are now four guards outside of the gallery. There were two when you were here last time. Um, and he ushers you into the gallery. Um, go ahead and make... Uh, Ash and, well, anybody who's been here before, so everyone but Friar Pip, go ahead and make either an intelligence check or investigation if, if you are uh, trained in that and that is a thing you want to focus on, which I know Ash will. <laughs> That's a 21. 17. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eight. okay. Rocky still really wants to go back to our party. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's got to be on the got to-do it. list yeah. for today, right? <laughs> I sure hope so. Uh, Elena, you definitely recognize that the three items that you previously retrieved are on pedestals that were previously empty um, when he he showed you around before. Uh, Ash, you noticed this as well. You also noticed that three more are empty. (laughs) So he ushers you inside. Um, The one that stands out for you in particular uh, although you're not sure if that has any relevance, other than to say you remember that that violin at the back of the room. The violin is now gone. Um, Well, that was a high enough roll. I'll give you all of them. (laughs) So you notice now that the violin is missing, because these were all things I called out last time. Uh, The walking stick that has the black coating and the etched bone ring around it is also missing. So the little pedestal that was holding that is now empty. Uh, And there was a, a box, a small box cube like um those three pedestals are now empty as well as the three uh the four that were still empty from your previous experience that haven't been retrieved yet and he ushers you into the gallery and he sort of slams the door shut behind him uh and he goes okay you're here didn't think well you're here you can fix this definitely you can fix this because there's more of them gone, and he sort of gestures in the direction of some things that you all have already noticed. But he left something this time. What? And I'm very upset. <laughs> and he is once again <laughs> waving a piece of paper. It seems to be the theme of the morning. People waving pieces of paper in your general direction. Um, but he doesn't seem to be... He's just sort of waving it around. He's very flustered. He seems very upset about this. May I? And he goes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sort of hands you the piece of paper. And he, he while you're reading this, and I'll read it to you in just a second... Um, he's mostly just sort of mumbling to himself and, and sort of, um, to, well, let me, I'll give you the note first. Um, and then you can ask about it. 
So this is a short note. It is not like on River Glean paper or anything. Um, the paper seems to, it has, seems to have probably been pre-written and left here. Um, and it says, it says uh, River Gleam, you remind me of the man himself. But before you take that as a compliment, you, of anyone on your pitiful plane, would know how much I despised him. He thwarted me at every turn in London, and you, you would idolize him. He drove me out of his world, and that was a setback. But the end game is so much larger, and there are such better prizes. I didn't expect your interference, but it has had an unintended effect, the creation of your so-called collection. Some thanks are in order, I suppose. I'll save that for when we meet. It won't be long now. And then at the bottom is a dash and a letter J. London. Is that like that Londinium? The place sucks. <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> Ugh. Sure it hasn't improved in time. Your your party members could tell you uh, that uh, the stories that Lord Riverbloom told when they first visited were of his own travels to this place called London. Um, where he came to know of this this detective Sherlock Holmes uh, and became somewhat obsessed with his stories and adventures and began traveling to collect these pieces. Um, the other pivotal piece here is as these pieces of what would be mundane things from the world you originally came from uh, have taken on magic of this place and have properties to them now. They are not simply the things that they are. Un Which is why they have become his collection. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to see if there's anything else with this this note, anything that I notice. Yep. Go ahead so, and yep. investigate away. That's a 15. Okay. Uh, so this note is obviously written, well, not obviously, I'm telling you, it's written in common. Um, but it is in, a, I would say it's a somewhat decorative hand. Um there's nothing that, you know, the language itself um, sounds relatively like common. There's nothing that stands out that would suggest otherwise. Uh, the paper is pretty plain. It looks like paper you would see in many stationery shops in Neverwinter. So someone acquired it and wrote this note. Um, could have come from anywhere. It doesn't even have to be Neverwinter. Um, and uh, as you're reading over it, River Gleam tells you that this note was specifically... Yeah, yeah, I should tell you the details, shouldn't I? I know I didn't want to tell you the details last time, but it seems like it's more important, especially if you're going to find it. Because I want my stuff back, let me be clear about that. But I also, I, he's a problem. Um, and he specifically tells you the note was on the pedestal where the box was taken from. The small box. Uh, he, he's, yeah. So. What was what, what the else small box? Yeah, what was the small um, box? He goes, um, well, it was made of a, um, a strange kind of material that we don't, I mean, it was kind of like paper, but it wasn't really paper. It was, it was like sturdier paper, but you couldn't just open it. It was kind of a puzzle box. He says, I, I never really sat down and bothered to figure out what the puzzle was. Um, it was more about, you know, the item itself. And, you know, in the home story, it was just a box. It wasn't anything all that exciting. Um... And he says, he genuinely seems surprised and he has this realization that, I mean, I guess there was something in it after all. <laughs> Insight check. Uh, go ahead and roll an insight check. 18. Okay. 10. We'll roll a thing. Um... Yeah. Uh, no, you don't think he's lying, Ash. You, you genuinely think, because the way he has talked about his collection to date, he is really interested in the items themselves. He, he, as far as you can tell, has never used the magical properties of the items that you've recovered or any of the items that he has. Um, so, and, and you know that he's not open to people just wandering in and, and coming in and viewing this collection. So it seems, he seems genuinely honest in the fact that he has not, given his whole attention to trying to solve the box and open it. And it genuinely, he's like, if there was something in there, it doesn't particularly, it didn't necessarily hold interest for him before now. Can I? But now he seems concerned. <laughs> um, can I ritual cast tech magic on the pedestal? 
see if there um, is some sort of... You can spend, if you would like to spend ten minutes ritually casting Detect Magic, you may do so. Are you got party members? Are you cool to hang out for ten minutes? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Ash You got a crossword? <laughs> Any light reading? Actually, Ash mostly wants to look around. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and ask him, push him a little bit more on, you know, why he was so interested in this collection in the first place. I mean, we it, found out, you know, we found out there's some interesting things about it, but why and how uh, he came to these, right. since it seems like it might be useful to know, given our... And you know. As Ash walks by Rocky, he's going to say, and ask him about the money, too. <laughs> um, so he, he repeats a little of the story that he told you before, that he is a divination wizard, that he traveled to this place called London, and he seems a little intrigued by the fact that Friar Pip referred to it as Londinium. He's yeah. like, is that, I mean, that, we'll, have to, we'll come back to that. Was Holmes there then? He seems really intrigued. Uh, <laughs> that you understand where he's talking about is something new. He's never encountered anyone who knows what he's ta- knows the place that he speaks of. So he he reminds some of you, and he sort of builds on the story of how he uh, traveled to this place because he wanted to explore other planes or other places, um, and began to read these stories of this Sherlock Holmes. Um, and in the alternate reality in which we are positing, the, he was both a real character and the subject of stories, as you recall. So uh, he became obsessed with Sherlock Holmes as a character and wanted to build his own little collection of items that were uh, figured in different stories or adventures that Holmes and his... Oh, and he has that partner, Watson. Um, not as exciting of a guy, quite frankly. But... Uh, <laughs> But, um, so he began collecting these pieces for his own purposes, which is somewhat selfish, and, you know, whether or not there were consequences to that in, in the place that they came from, he's not so sure. Um, but he, uh, that is basically what, sorry, my cat has decided to <laughs> join the party here as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so he's been collecting these pieces. What, what has happened, of course, the unintended consequence that he has referred to and is referred to in this note is that by spending time in this plane, um, these items have all taken on some magic and have become rare and wondrous items that you would find here in uh, in Faerun, Uh, which was not his intention. And that is part of the reason he keeps them and keeps quiet about it is because uh, out in the world they could be misused or very dangerous objects. And he is interested in them more for their scholarship value or for their pop culture value, to put it in contemporary <laughs> terms, than, than their actual uh, abilities or capabilities. Oh. So he's a custodial archivist. <laughs> he, is, he is a custodial archivist. <laughs> um, but one thing he lets slip as he is telling you this is um, he says, he's, he's looking at where Ash is maybe still holding on to this note, and he says, I didn't I mean, I didn't tell you everything last time because, I mean, the stories are pretty wild for someone from here. I mean, you probably all thought I wasn't totally there when I started telling you the things I was telling you. I don't, I don't really know how it would be possible, he says, but um, Holmes had a nemesis. Mm-hmm. It was a, a guy, but he took care of that problem. And that was back on that plane in another whole other place. So I don't, it doesn't really make sense, right? It couldn't be. Right? And what was his um, name? Uh, so you, see, you see him sort of think for a moment. Uh, Moriarty. That was the name. Pip's gonna like look over Nancy from little. where he's like doing all the ritual stuff and be like, that doesn't start with a J. <laughs> no, I mean, but his first name did. He sort of offhandedly remarks. I think that his first name did. What was that first name? Yeah, first name was a J. But I mean, he died back on that other plane. What? I mean, the, what are the odds somebody... I mean, maybe somebody else knows these stories? I don't know. Uh, so, Ash, did you want to... Were you doing... You were poking around while this is happening, or...? I... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some of the objects, and I'm looking for anything that might be hidden. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll another investigation check. 
Well, actually, so I, I wanted to use... Or do you have a thing? <laughs> there, yeah, there's a thing. Okay. Uh, it's my eye for detail. Okay. I can make a perception check to spot hidden creature or object, or to make an investigation check to uncover or to decipher clues. So I don't know which... I'm kind of mm -hmm. looking for something, anything that's hidden in the room. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, do you have to roll anything for that, or is it just a given that you? It's an it's an action, so I have to make a check. It thing. just okay. Hmm. I mean, I can do it in. It's a it's meant as a bonus action. Okay. But uh, okay. Oh no, that's proficiencies. I was looking for a description of it, but um, oh, eye for detail. There it is. You can use, okay, so go ahead and make a perception check then. Okay. A little different than your investigation. But, I mean, as we should tell people out there, this is what Ash is designed for. Lots of high numbers. Yeah. <laughs> While he's doing that, I'm going to continue the conversation and uh, follow directions and inelegantly ask about the money. No. Oh. <laughs> no, Rocky. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Ash rolled a 27 on that perception That's check. a natural 20, please. That is a natural 20 plus 7. Um, put me on the spot here. Yeah, so one thing that you notice, uh, Ash, because you have this eye for detail, as you are passing by the pedestal that had the box on it in particular, because this is the item of focus, so this would make the most sense. Um, although River Gleam has assured you multiple times there is no way in and out of this room, um, you see a print in the carpet, a, a footprint of some sort, um, that is distinctly not particularly humanoid looking. Mm -hmm. It is like humanoid size, but it's obviously, it's none of your boot prints, it's none of your, it's not River Gleam's, um, there is one, like, right footprint. And you don't even know. Obviously, there should have been a left foot there too, but for some reason, the carpet didn't catch that. Okay. Can I can I guesstimate the size of the foot? Um, you would guess it belongs to a creature that is still of, mechanically speaking, medium size. Okay. Um. But yeah. And uh, about this time, we'll come back to the conversation about money in just a second. There is a puff of smoke and incense of some sort, and uh, Friar Pip finishes this ritual <laughs> spell, and <laughs> uh, and uh, you you most likely cast this spell before Friar Pip. This is a very useful spell. You are more overwhelmed by the detection of magic than you have ever been. Mm. It is like everything in this room is lighting up. Well, except the people. Well, actually, no. Some of there are magic items on some of you as well. So. Other than those things, um, every item on a pedestal is radiating some sort of aura, and they vary across different schools of magic. Um, and uh, the pedestals themselves are irradiating uh, a magic uh, that you presume is some sort of protective magic to yeah. prevent people uh, from being able to take things from them. Uh, Lord River Gleam also has some glows on him, which also suggests he has some things. Um, he would be radiating... Shoot, I don't have my cheat sheet for schools of magic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll need to get that out later. Super magic -y magic. He is, He is. well, you know that he, is, he has told you he's a divination wizard. Um, so, uh, but he definitely has uh, a couple of, of magic items on his person squirreled away somewhere. Uh, all of the rest of you do. But basically, yeah, everything on a pedestal in this room and the pedestals themselves. It's like you're almost blinded at first while you're trying to take all this in. Is there any place that's, like, kind of mundane that is glowing with magic, like the carpet or a wall or anything like that? Um, no. The the pedestals themselves are what glow. The, the walls, well, I mean, the walls and the floor seem to be mundane in and of okay. themselves. The door also radiates some sort of protective magic. Okay. Um, you, this is the only way in this room. There are no, at least as far as you can tell, um, Ash would have most likely found a secret door if there was one. There are no windows um, or anything like that. So he, this is what confuses him so much. He is, he's assured you before that the only way in and out is through the doors that he's now standing, pretty much standing in front of. 
Um, so someone has gotten in and out. Um, and he says, um, he, if he left the note where the box was, it must mean the box is important, right? I mean, maybe I should have tried harder to open it. Mm -mm. And then he looks over at Rocky and he goes, money. Money? Yeah, I, I told Nesra, I don't care about the money. Got tons of it. I look over at Rocky and <laughs> I say, you want? That, that's very rude. <laughs> no. Uh, he is, you've seen him be very flippant about money before when he paid you for the last job, so. <laughs> he says, look, if you can bring back my items and if you can find him, he's whoever's behind this, uh, then it, you can name your price. He says, I, I don't care. Oh, I got my eye on some new bee boxes. <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> the finest money can buy. <laughs> he says, so, what do you say? Will you take the job? Yeah! <laughs> I'm in. I mean, I'm, maybe I can get back there and solve my problems, right? <laughs> As they're talking, Ash will pull out the, the amulet. The planes travel. Did in. he let you keep that? I he thought I did. Made you give that back. He let okay. me keep it. I was shocked. I was shocked. I say. I know that's because you were coming back. For, I'm glad you remembered that because I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, he says, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna need that, but give it to me for a second. I got an idea." Uh, he reluctantly hands it over. Um, you see him sort of uh, mutter a little bit and gesture over it, and uh, Friar Pip, your detect magic would still be going at this point, so you see a, another sort of flash of some divination magic. And he says, I was thinking about this, because, you know, last time I didn't know where it was going to take you, right? It just took you to a thing, wherever you went, and that was that. Um, but I got a better handle on this magic. So this, we know, we want to get you closer to the box. So this should get you close to the box, like last time, except to a specific item. It shouldn't just toss you around the planes for a while. I'm not entirely sure what happens after that, but if the box is so important, it should it should sort itself out. It should be clear. If not, it'll take you to another item after that. And it's one step closer. And he will hand you back the ambulance. Okay. He almost looks at, he looks at Friar Pip for a moment and seems to think, like, Mm, Friar Pip's been doing some plane traveling, maybe, but assumes that if you, you know, you, you were the one that had it, so he gives it back to you because you at least have an understanding of what it does. And I'll turn and kind of look at everybody and see if they're ready without actually saying. And... You're, gonna t you're not going to tell Friar Pip what's going to happen? You're just going <laughs> to. Yep. And I'm just going to think about it, and off we go. Okay. Uh, so for some of you, you've experienced this before, but it is always very jarring. Uh, for Friar Pip, this is new. You yes. are standing... New <laughs> yes. You are, yeah. Well, this is a little bit different than some of the experiences you've had, I think. Uh, you are standing in in Lord River Green, Gleam's estate in the Gallery of Gizmos, and then there is a flash of jet black light, if you can call jet black light at all. The absence of light, I'm not really sure. Um... And all of you, the, the previous times you've traveled with this, you've, you've landed on, you know, solid ground in a place that has been, you know, eventful, but no immediate threats. Um, the place that you appear now is the opposite of all of that. You are not on solid ground, and as you take a moment to try and orient yourself, there is no solid ground. As you look around, you are sort of floating in some space, um, as you look off in the distance in different directions, you see uh, a volcano that appears from the nothingness and begins to shoot ice out of the top and then melts away. And you look over in another direction and you see a small bit of forest appear and then just as quickly sort of fade away. Uh, far off in the distance, you think you see the ruins of a castle and then they seem to explode with volcanic sort of eruption and disappear. Uh, and then as you look down, you see what looks like a stream going past your feet, but instead of water, it seems to be made of dirt and earth. Uh, and it sort of almost travels by underneath you like it was some sort of worm. Um, and you just, as you are floating in this space, 
you just see these kinds of chaotic eruptions and visions and things appearing and disappearing around you um, with little rhyme or reason to them. Uh, but the four of you are floating. If you <laughs> just sort of, as you're trying to orient yourself and realize there is nothing to orient to, you might just sort of be spinning a little bit or <laughs> drifting around. Um, if you, if you, you know, don't pay too much attention, you might start to drift away from the group. Do, yeah. we, do we have any control? Like, could I try and float down to that nice little patch of earth where I feel at home? Yes. Actually, the moment you think about that, Rocky, you start to drift in that direction. And watching this, do I have an idea of where we might be? Uh, go ahead and roll uh, either intelligence. All of you can roll either intelligence or arcana, whichever you would prefer. Or history. It should probably sort of be history. But not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm open to alternatives. 24. Yep. 15. 16. Okay. What have I got? Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> I got another natural one. I'm not helping. Well, I also, realize... I want to grab Rocky as he's like floating away. Make sure okay. he stays with the group. <laughs> yeah. I could... uh, well, I, but Rocky has in fact discovered that you can move yourself. Uh, it is as simple as thinking about which direction you would like to go and you move you're not moving any faster than if you were walking but you are not required to walk you sort of just drift um yeah ash you know a lot friar pip and elena you have heard of this place you may not know a whole lot about it but what you are seeing before you uh is is entirely representative of the plane of limbo mm -hmm. um you know that this is in fact a plane of pure chaos and matter and energy uh, there is no gravity here, as you have all learned. <laughs> you can just sort of float, and you can think about moving and go in that direction. You can go left, right, up, down, whatever you would like to do. Um, and uh, you know that there are creatures here. You're not sure who you'll bump into or if you will. Um, then uh, Ash, with your 24, <laughs> you know that there are also some other things about this place. It is very dangerous. Um, you do know that there are extremely dangerous creatures here. Uh, they could uh, appear or disappear as rapidly as the rest of the chaos around you. Um, you know that there are creatures that make their homes here. Um, and uh, you do know that people who are disciplined and structured and, and can spend a little bit of time can learn to harness some of the chaos around them to use it to your advantage. I will, uh, I will, again, absentmindedly tell everybody this while okay. I do my orientating as we have in the past. Well, kind of like, look, you know, <laughs> move around and see if I can detect if there's any difference in heat. Yeah, um, uh, all of this place, it's a little confusing because one moment you are very warm in this place because some, you know, uh, desert landscape has sure. shown up on your left side and then it disappears. Um, but yeah, as you take a moment to orient, and I'm picturing you just sort of spinning in a circle in space while this is happening, um, you do feel a little bit of heat uh, in this thing. And as you are sort of trying to focus on that and pay attention, uh, it comes to your attention that uh, off in the distance a little ways is a building. And as you watch it, it does not uh, just disperse and reappear. It seems to be static. Or at least for now. You don't know how long, because this is a plane of chaos, any of that can last. But there seems to be a building, and that seems to suggest a destination for you. Okay. I will think, moving that direction, <laughs> that and I will <laughs> tell, tell everybody else it's this way. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and, and uh, as I will, because you rolled so high, what I want to do is the more time you spend here, you'll get a little bit more about how you might be able to wield this place to your advantage. I'm not going to give it to you all at once. Okay. So we'll sort of uh, let that evolve a little bit as we go. Um, so yeah, you, if you all choose to follow Ash's lead and head in, in the direction of this building that seems relatively stable for now, um, it's very strange because it looks kind of like a cabin but it's not on any ground. It's just a cabin in space. Um, there is a door at the front and you are coming at it from the front angle. So you are not sure about any of the other sides, 
Um, but it is a pretty nondescript looking cabin that is somehow floating in space. Um, nothing's like falling out the bottom, so you assume it has some sort of floor, <laughs> but you're not sure because you're still too far out to, to get a good sense of that. While we're heading that way, I just want to see what uh, what happens if I cast a spell. So I'm going to cast okay. Mage Hand. Okay. Um, your Mage Hand pops, pops into view. Do I see this? Yes. Well, it's invisible. Do so I know no. that he's casting? You would see... Is, is that a verbal only spell? Uh, or is that... Okay, let's see. It's Let a cantrip. Check. It's verbal somatic. So yeah, you would hear him mutter something to himself and see him gesture. Yeah. And you know, Ash, that you have successfully uh, generated your mage hand. Okay. I keep... It is sort of spectral, so... Yeah. Yeah, I guess you would see it. I I pay attention to that. I see it. I see what you're doing, bud. <laughs> I'm gonna um, toss a copper piece and be like, can you catch this with your mage hand? Does it work as should? I will, I will reach out to catch it. Um, yeah, there's no gravity here, so it's, like, it's not like if you toss a coin, it would, it would go and then start to fall. So ah. you toss the coin, and it just sort of starts to drift Spin. away yeah. from you in a sort of upward arc, so the hand can grab it, for sure. Okay. But directionally, it's very hard to, like, throw something directly at someone and expect it to go in the path that you, so, you envision. So can I, can I... Uh, think and try to actually make the mage hand invisible. Mm. This is like Lake of Heaven. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Le Guin vibes. How am I going to bend this a little bit? <laughs> I gotta bend the rules that you haven't even figured out how they work yet. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to figure out the rules. I know. Um... Okay, so we'll use this roll. Go ahead and uh, roll an intelligence check. Okay. Yes, intelligence check. Intelligence check. Come on. There it goes. Boo. 13. 13. Uh, okay, that is... So, yeah, you, uh, you're you not quite sure if this is the way this power in this place is supposed to work, but you are, you, you somehow, it, it'll give you an idea of how things work. Um, you are able to make the hand invisible. It's not in a traditional sense, like the hand just disappears. It's more like you're manipulating the plane, the chaos of the plane around it, so it is less noticeable or tangible. So it's more you're, you're using the environment and bending it to this rather than like forcing your mage hand to not be visible okay. just using um what you understand out of this uh since this is really great <laughs> this is a really clever way to discover this um is that you can move an object on the plane that you can see within a certain within a, a distance and you'll have to discover a little bit more about that distance um you can move it up a certain amount you know depending on how well mechanically speaking how well you roll but um, and in a way, I'm bending this to say basically you're bending the the non-magical or the energy that are around you to disguise or mask the hand. Okay. We'll, we'll manipulate it that way. <laughs> I just, I keep one hand on the wand knowing where this is going. I, I watched you do all of this. Like stuffing it in your pocket. Oh, no, I'm like physically holding on to it, not inside. It's in a <laughs> pocket. I'm just like, mm-mm. Okay. Because your mage hand is magical. So yeah, that will we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. You know, you now know that you can mentally move an object in the plane, or you can attempt to mentally move an object in this plane that you can see. And how how fast are we moving at this point? You are moving your walking speed. You you do not have to walk, but you can't move faster than you could normally go. Hmm. So we're almost at this cabin. Is it made of wood? Um yeah, you think so. It doesn't. It's pretty nondescript. It's probably made of wood. Um, as you, how how close are you getting to this? You just gonna go right up to the front door? Or? I think no. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Not to be leading, but are you gonna go right up to the front door? I think about sixty feet away, maybe. Okay. There's nowhere to hide, right? Well, that, no. was, gonna, that was gonna be my next thing because because it works so well last time. 
I want a bonus action hide. Well, I have Pass Without Trace from that staff. Uh, yeah. So, if we want to use that. Okay. Do, 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 do we want to hide people? I mean, it yes. never hurts. I think I so. I have Pass Without Trace, too, if we need it again later, so. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, the only thing is, if we stop 60 feet away, people in there will have already seen us. Unless they have bad eyesight. Well, there right now you're coming at it from the front. There is a door. There is no window. It's a solid front. You haven't investigated around any other parts of it, so you okay. have no reason to necessarily believe that. There's no. There's no. Well, I mean, this is a chaotic plane. Maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. they don't need windows to see through. But fair enough. Okay. From what you can tell, there is there is no way to see out the front of this building. So I will cast Pass Without Trace. Um, okay. All of us have plus 10 bonus to stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. Okay. And we don't leave behind tracks or other traces of our passage. So, if anyone Not was... Not really leaving tracks yeah. anyway, but... <laughs> anyone was <laughs> snacking cool. in the astral plane and left some crumbs, they're gone. <laughs> no one can see them. I won't point to you. Okay, so you are 60 feet out from this cabin. What would you, what would you like to do? Um... Should we split up in twos and kind of work around the building? How long does uh, the spell last? Up to an hour. Okay, so we've, we've and do we have to be within distance or up to No, to... once you're, it's cast on everybody who is in Friar Pip's immediate vicinity, and then you are essentially good to go for that time period. Okay. So you don't have to remain. I think I don't think you have to remain right next to each other. I think it's just when you cast it, you have to be nearby. Uh... No, they have to be within 30 feet of me. Oh, okay. So for the yeah, duration. That's, that's, that's what okay. I was thinking. So, no my bad. No worries. Well, we should, like, look in the window, right? If and you said it doesn't appear to have a bottom. No, it does. It, you, you were, at this point, nothing. No, I said was nothing's falling out of the bottom of it, oh. which would suggest that it has some sort of floor because this place seems a little. You would have figured by now if there was not a floor, something would have, like, drifted out. Okay. Yeah, I wonder, it would be really awesome if someone had a homunculus that could do some investigating oh, yeah. for you. <laughs> do you have a homunculus? I do. Uh, nice. Elena can have a homunculus. You can make one. That's me helping Alex play Artificer. <laughs> that's me backseat Artificering. No, I need it. Okay. But that's up to you whether you want to do that. But. If you want, I can go take a look. Or Ash can go take a look. Or you could just hang out here. <laughs> well, I'm the, the if, if people don't decide something soon, I'm going to go because I'm tired of floating around like <laughs> the least grounded you can be. Mm-hmm. How does one make it a homunculus? And I, I can do that if people want. If people okay. are like, no, I don't care. Let's just go. That's also fine. Uh, it's one of your your artificer infusion things. So essentially, you touch. I believe you touch a gem that I would assume you have on your person, and it forms into a tiny little creature. It is literally a tiny creature. So it, it's a very it's. And I think you can you can make it out of whatever I think. So it doesn't yeah, have to be a gem. Yeah, there's a cost. There's a cost to making it. So oh, just okay. Count that like a gem cost, but um, and you, I believe, get to decide what it looks like. Yeah. So let's look at this real quick. Yeah, so you can make a tiny construct, um, and you decide what it looks like, so you get to tell us what your tiny homunculus who is friendly to you and your companions and obeys your commands uh, looks like. And uh, we have a little stat block for him if anything goes wrong. (laughs) Uh, It is something like a a mechanical cat. Aww. Perhaps a little Amazing. aloof, very observant. <laughs> very yes, observant. We'll, we'll pay attention <laughs> to things in its uh, environment. And okay. so I will send him over to a window. Yeah, so he obeys your commands. Uh, he can do things on his his own if you wish him to do so. He has a a little attack action. Uh, He can try and evade if something comes at him. 
and he can also uh, channel magic. So if he's within 120 feet of you, you can use him to cast a spell. Mm-hmm. So all important things to keep in mind for your tiny cat homunculus. <laughs> Very excited Don, about it. Was she all distracted please? while she was uh, doing her homunculus? I never took uh, my hand off the sure wand. <laughs> but constant vigilance but mm. when you cast it don't you isn't it uh somatic yeah but you can you only need one hand yeah. depends yeah. that's a whole thing right <laughs> weapon in one <laughs> hand spell casting focus in the other <laughs> Well, artificers don't have a focus per se. You had to have your hands on the gem co- that that it would cost. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Elena can still have her hand on the wand <laughs> for now. For now. Okay. Uh, so are you are you sending your tiny cat to investigate? Yes. Where where would you like it to go? Uh, just I think the nearest window and have him just kind of peek up. Mm-hmm. So as your homunculus cat attempts to learn to navigate limbo, uh, it too can move, uh, it actually can, your cat can actually walk or fly. So we will, your cat, if you have a flying cat, this is very exciting, uh, who is traveling through limbo. So uh, your cat is, is pretty easily able to make it towards the, to the, cl- close the distance between you all in about two turns. Um, and begins to make its way around the side. Uh, the side that it passes, there is no window. It's just, again, this solid sort of wood wall. Um, but at the back, there is another door. And this door has a little porthole window. <laughs> playing with my dice. Uh, <laughs> has a little porthole window in the center. Um, so your cat can go and look. You cannot see through your cat. This is not like a familiar. So it sees some things. And it will come back and attempt to communicate those to you uh, shortly. Oh. Did you? <laughs> Wait, can, can homunculuses talk? Because I have a spell for that. <laughs> they uh, can understand the languages that their creator speaks, but they cannot speak themselves. Oh, okay. Can I, uh, unless people object, can I get closer so I can use my ring of x-ray vision to take a look through the wall from this side? Mm. Yes, that sounds awesome. All right, okay, so I'm going to so... get uh, right up near, because it's only got a 30-foot radius okay. for the x-ray vision, right up near the wall without touching it. Okay. And speak the command word for my, my ring and okay. take a look at what's inside. Okay. Um, the range is 30 feet on that, 30 you feet. said? Yeah. Okay, so as you get up closer... Um, you can suddenly see through the front wall and uh, you see the back of a creature um, that is probably unlike anything you have ever seen before, Rocky. Um, if you had to describe it, it looked looks like a large toad, and I mean like bigger than you toad, but it's kind of got like claws, it's got very long claws on its hands and uh, its feet are not quite, they're not webbed feet, but they're kind of big spread out toes. Um, its back is to you, so you, uh, you're you not quite sure. And then off to its side, sort of uh, hanging out over its shoulder um, is what appears to be a snake with wings. This is really confusing. <laughs> this is some, some strange stuff. <laughs> Um, go ahead and also roll a, a perception check. Right. Hold on. Uh, Which, unfortunately, I think you're still stuck with I'm disadvantage. Still at disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, I'm really homesick, especially now that there's no ground at all. For a place that's not even your home. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad we didn't help him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, natural 20. Oh, Ooh, I'm at disadvantage. Natural 20. No, I'm at disadvantage. That's okay. Shoot. Uh, there we go. Um, a 14. 14. That's not bad. Okay. So, yeah, there is this creature that you're not quite sure what it is. There's this other creature that looks like a snake with wings that seems to be flying near its shoulder. And, again, you're seeing them from behind because they seem to be facing towards that back door. Um, there are uh, some, there's some bare furniture in here, like a table and some chairs. Um, but with your 14, 
it's not going to get you anything else. But you know what's in there now. Well, I mean, you don't know what it is, but there's something in there. <laughs> Do they seem to be taking any, like, particular interest in the back of the building where our uh, cat and it just <laughs> It's... <laughs> the At this point, the cat would not have... Depending on when you did this, the cat may not even be there yet. Oh, okay. Um, but that's a good point. So, um, let's see. I guess, Elena, if you want to go ahead and roll a D, just roll a, D, a D20, and we're going to add plus two to that for your, oh no, stealth. Uh, stealth is plus two, plus proficiency bonus. Wow. Okay, so roll a D20. Thirteen. Okay, plus five. So that is 18. And let me check something else real quick. Um, too many screens. Come back. Where's my thing? I'm building up intensity. <laughs> While I try to roll because my computer's not cooperating. Alright, we'll do this this way. Okay, uh, you're pretty sure that they have not noticed your homunculus cat. Okay. Um, but yes, so the cat uh, would continue to make its way around the building, and you would find out there is also no window on the other side. So door at the front, door at the back with a porthole window, no windows on the sides. Mm, interesting. How big is this building? Sorry? How big is this building? Um... It's a, basically, it's like a one-room cabin. There are no, you, you, you didn't see any, like, divider walls or anything on the inside, so it's about 30 feet by 30 feet, maybe, just sort of floating there in the air. So I can basically see the whole inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, there's really, there's nothing, there's no walls, there's no dividers. You could pretty much see all the way to the back door. Maybe not the homunculus cat, because I assume it wasn't, like, right there at the window, but maybe it was. Classic cat. All right, I... uh, and it makes its way back to you and Elena, and it, it attempts to convey however your tiny homunculus conveys information to you that there is a door with a window at the back. And there's some creatures, and it tries to convey to you that there is, much like Rocky has seen, a snake with some wings and a big, scary, big, red, froggy-like thing. Froggy-like thing. Yeah, so I'm floating back over to everybody else, too. Okay. Good homunculus. Pat, pat. Uh, you notice, um, Ash, that when you, you know you're headed in the right direction. The ambulance has slowly gotten warmer. Okay. Can I float down? I still want to be like 60 feet out, but can I kind of like float down and look from underneath? Uh, Pet. you can, yeah, you can attempt to, it's just a solid floor. Okay. Pip, Pip feels like a chaperone on a field trip with the 30, the 30 foot ring. It's like, oh, oh, now we're all going down. All go down. Come on, hold hands. As Ash like floats down. Well, I, I would also like to focus on the, the floor and imagine that there's a trap door. Hmm. Mm. Um, go ahead and roll an intelligence check. There is actually a way to navigate this a little bit. 22. With a 22, you can alter a non-magical object. So the floor of this building is not magical. It is a building. It is in a plane of chaos, but it's still just a cabin. Um, so you can alter a non-magical object that is not being worn or carried. Uh, with your 22, you can manipulate up to, let's see, math is hard for Kira. Um, five, six, like seven square feet of surface okay. I'm going to give you. Okay. <laughs> so yes, effectively you, uh, can create a small trapdoor somewhere on the floor of this building. So as as I'm doing that and I see that it's working, I will stop. Okay. After I've made like a seam and okay. kind of uh, encourage everyone to come down. And, oh, we're and, with yeah, you. Yeah, we came with the you. The chaperone has made sure well, we're all together. Okay. 
duckling style. But I, I was then gonna tell tell everybody what what I what I think we could do if we wanted to get in. Okay. Yeah. So is the plan then to sneak in, get this thing, and get out? Or are we applying force to I, this creature? I, I'm thinking we're not going to be able to sneak in, guys. It's just one room. And He's there's... sneaky. I point to Ash. <laughs> Can we distract him? We have I mean, paths without trace. We could send trace. the cat in first. And... Or send the cat up to the door with, it, with the window porthole and have him make a bit of a ruckus and then pop in from the floor. I'll just stand okay. in the wings and wait in case things go south. <laughs> the Get wings my... underneath this floating <laughs> cabin? <laughs> the metaphorical wings. Okay. But I got my hands on my weapon. Yeah, I'm thinking not all of us should go in, right? That just make it harder. Um, and the cabin's small enough, like, if I'm hovered, like, just to the side underneath, you'll still be within the Pass Without Trace, Ash, if you want to go sneaky sneak and try to get it. Yeah, I think... I think this is our best shot. You have to find it, though. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, it's not a problem, and I hold up the amulet. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Good. Yeah, if we didn't convey that to you, Sarah, the amulet plays the game of hot or hot, or hot and cold, so the closer oh. you get to the item, the hotter it gets. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, yeah, I would say if somebody goes to the back door and sort of serves as a distraction... Yeah. And I will make the trap door in the front side and sneak in. Hi. Here's my... Hello. Are we sending someone or just the cat? Well, that was adorable, out of character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, our guests, our stream has many guests. <laughs> uh, I'm fine sending the homunculus, unless somebody wants to volunteer to go distract. It might be nice to have Rocky nearby just in case. Yeah. If the homunculus doesn't work as an, a distraction, we can figure it out. Okay, so I, I will wait until we are like almost ready to enter, and I'll send the homunculus up to the portal door and have him like start tapping on it and like flailing a little bit and try to get their attention through the window <laughs> and like make some noise. What's the floor made of, Kira? Lava. Uh <laughs> no, it was a wood floor that um, that Ash is attempting to create a uh, less than three uh, feet thick. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, good. I can watch then. <laughs> it's, well, had, yes, that's, right. Because you have a thing, probably yes. been close to a minute, but I should at least be able to see it. Okay. I'm only get a minute. Oh. All right, so uh, we are doing this as homunculus cat goes tappy tappy on the door. Mm -hmm. As as have you already made the door, Ash? No, this I'm 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 sort of waiting to till we're we're ready to go, and then I'll make the the door. Um, I want it to open down. Okay. So. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you want to throw it up and hit. <laughs> And I kind of want to. I kind of want to do it in a <laughs> corner. Back down on you. In a okay. in a corner. So hoping that maybe it'll be like in a in some darkness. So. Okay. Uh. So first we're getting the tappy taps. When the tappy taps happen, uh, at the back door, this large creature that uh, Rocky's the only one that's seen, and your cat could not really convey what it was because it had no concept of it. Uh, does in fact charge towards the door, uh, but it does one. not. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and it throws the door open, but it does not seem to exit. Okay. Um, go ahead, and we got to do one thing before we get jump back to you, Ash. Uh, Elena, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw for your oh, homunculus. No. Here we go. <laughs> So he has evasion, Ooh, which means ten. Uh, advantage. Actually, before before you, yeah. So let me check on how many hit points he has. One plus six or six seven. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, your homunculus has ten hit points for the record. It's a combination of things. 
Uh, go ahead and roll a d20 and add two. All right, rolled a 14, so 16. Okay, uh, this guy does. 20. Nope. Let's do. But if. Now I can't remember how to roll. If the homunculus has evasion, does that mean she gets advantage? It means he takes. No, it means he takes less damage uh. if he, he does, in fact, get hit. Um. Which he does not, because uh, he dodges out of the way as this door is thrown open, uh, and sort of nice. backs out of the way. And the the very large creature definitely reached out with a very sharp claw, uh, and took a swing and missed. But also, I forgot, has multi-attack. <laughs> oh no! Uh, and critted on that one, oh. so that's a 26 to hit your poor little homunculus, oh. which I believe is twice... Twice his armor yeah, class. Yeah, so he disappears and leaves a heart. Apparently, that's, no, that's, that's what happens. That's what it says. <laughs> if it dies, it vanishes, uh, yeah. leaving its heart in its space. Oh. I, so the claws of this thing just rip through the metalish that is your homunculus, uh, and he did in fact distract this thing. So this is this is happening, and while this is happening, Ash, you are you are trying to stealth your way through the floor. Well, I'm gonna open it up and pop up and peek first, and kind of see if I can figure out where the object is. Um, and okay. by the way, I never dismissed my mage hand. So you still have your mage hand. Yes. You yeah. pop up in the corner, and uh, you were trying to stay away. So I'm gonna assume you were kind of at a front corner. Yeah. This thing's gone towards the back door. Um, what's really confusing, so basically you're not in a very large room, so there is definitely this heat that you are near something. Uh, what's, you're not quite sure because you've never experienced this before, but you think there are two different sources in this room. Okay. One of them uh, seems to be in the direction of the very large, terrifying red thing that has run at the back door. Okay. Uh, and the other seems to be a chest on the floor underneath the snake with wings who never left its position sort of in the middle of the room. How big is the chest? How big is the snake? Uh, <laughs> um, <get that. laughs> it's just a snake. Uh, how big is the chest? Uh, the chest is smaller than uh, like a five foot square. So it's probably like a two foot by two foot chest. Okay. Would you say, how much would you say it weighs? <laughs> more than 10 pounds more, yeah I was going to say more than a mage hand can lift I think okay. and do I... there's a reason this is strategically placed where it is yeah. uh, do I recognize the uh, serpent with wings um, go ahead and roll uh, I guess intelligence or animal handling <laughs> if that's a thing you have uh, uh, if no, I can I... can I still see has a minute passed or I guess we could probably, keep up the trap door, yeah, too. Probably not at this point, because y'all have been moving pretty yeah. quickly. Rounds are pretty short, so... Yeah. That's an eight. Okay. Uh, it looks like a snake with wings. Okay. I mean... <laughs> it is what it is. I don't, I don't know... <laughs> you don't know anything specific about this snake with wings, but it appears to be a snake with wings. Okay. And everyone's sort of, like, behind me. There's no one else... It was just... I mean, you can move people around if you want to tell people. Okay, I'm going to pop my head back down and close the door as quietly as possible and keep it. Like, obviously, I don't want to dismiss this trap door. But... Um, and then float back and tell everybody that I think there's two objects in there. I don't think it's going to be easy to get them. One is on whatever, <laughs> and the other is in a chest. <laughs> Mm, okay. So. I mean, to be fair, nobody's asked to try and identify what this big red thing is. <laughs> well, have I seen it? Because I well, would love to. I mean, I figured since I'm only seeing the back, I wouldn't really know. But Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good point. So, But I can't. I don't think I'll, I've seen I'll it. I've not seen it yet either, so. Mm. Well, Rocky, but 
He he couldn't. All right. He didn't. Yes, I should not have interfered with your. You you all decide what you want to do. Okay. I want to peek. I want to very sneakily peek, which I have passed without trace, so it should be a no-brainer. And I want to see if I know what the creature is. Uh, so, so he's still kind of out the front door, right? Like, can I sneak under the house and, like, try to, like, look like peek that? Peek up through the trap door? Well, uh, it, yeah, you're... Sorry. Or, oh, you're talking about going to the back door around the house? You yeah, because isn't he, like, okay. on the doorstep and the door's open? He was on the doorstep, and yeah, and after he took out the homunculus, he seems to be hanging out in the general vicinity of the back door. Now. Okay, so, like, very sneakily, just, like, do a little peek. Okay. Uh... I was hoping I could, I can't share it with our, our viewers. I was going to try and share the image with y'all on Zoom at the very least, uh, since you've kind of all gotten a look now. If this works, you should all see what you uh, have seen from various uh, angles. Okay. Ooh, and does Prior no. Pip know what this creature is? Um, depends on what kind of monster knowledge Friar Pip might have. If you would like to roll um, nature... Or, okay. or, yeah, nature or animal handling, if anybody, I guess more nature, if anybody wants to roll that. I'll do nature. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I can try. Let's see, nature. <laughs> yeah. Nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky. Two. No. Rocky with the 20 and then the two. Rocky. <laughs> I'm starting to feel really bad about even putting that <laughs> mechanism in here. Um. Yeah, you actually know what this is, Friar Pip. This is a red slot. You know that these things are somewhat dangerous. But what you know with your nat 20 is when you go to look at it, you notice something a little odd about this one. Uh, there seemed to be something sticking out of its head that didn't look like it belonged there. Um, <laughs> um, but more importantly, because you rolled a nat 20 and you therefore saw this thing sticking out of its head, you do know that there is a very specific type of slot that is controlled by a gem. Oh. So I'm gonna... And you're wondering if perhaps something is controlling this one. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to turn to the crew and I'm going to relay this nasty piece of work. Can you, with your mind powers, Ash... Extract the gem. In your mind palace, as it were. <laughs> yeah, in, in your mind palace with your mind powers, can you extract this gem? Uh, to be clear, you also know um, that when I say control gem, uh, there is a gem in the thing, but it also has to be controlled by something else. Uh, oh, maybe it's in the chest. Mm. Yeah, can't you just get the chest to come to you? Again, with the mind power. You know where it is. Can you, like, cut a hole underneath? Hey. Uh, I can try, but if it doesn't go well, things might go south. Are we ready Wait, for oh. that? Uh, I'm okay. I will... I'm getting impatient, so I'm ready I was gonna... for things to go south anytime. Okay. A Friar Pip will turn to uh, Rocky and say, ready in action. Well, I'm, I'm still a little, like, bummed at my homunculus yeah. and its short-lived life, so I'm, I'm, I'm good with a little revenge. Okay, so uh, Ash is going to go and float underneath to what he, where he remembers the chest, the location of the chest. Okay. Uh, um, I'm... I'm sorry, go ahead. And he's going to imagine the floor he's going to imagine the floor right underneath the chest becoming water okay um, go ahead and oh, can i ready in action in case yes. yeah stuff goes if off. anybody else wants to ready in action uh, yeah. to prepare for the floor falling out you may do so and then ash you are going well while well, y'all figure that out ash you're gonna roll uh that fun intelligence uh check Different DCs. There are different DCs to oh! sizes. Uh oh. That's a nat that one awesome. for five. Ooh. Um, about a five inch, or a five, like a one foot square, uh, of this floor turns to water and drops flat on your face, uh, definitely throwing you off. Okay. But, but you were not able. It was just now there is a like one foot hole in the floor above you 
Is it right under the chest, or is it... Yeah, it's not big enough for the chest to fall out, but it does appear to be underneath the chest. Can I whack the bottom of the chest with my maul? <laughs> but wait, can they see that the hole is even there yet? If the if the chest is covering it, we might still be a little d discreet. <laughs> How about... Uh, okay. and I, should I tell you what my ready to action is, or does that come later? Um, well, it... it I don't know what, yeah, we didn't establish what the triggers were for your ready Yeah, that, so that yeah. Me. That was me. That was on me. Okay, no worries. I just want to tell you before things got too yeah, yeah, far yeah. ahead. Yeah, so I'm going to position myself as kind of like in front of the crew. And if that big scary thing comes towards us and sees us, I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. Got it. Okay. Are you in front of the crew underneath the building, right? So yeah, presumably yeah. this thing came out at you. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so you have a, a, a small chunk of the floor underneath the chest missing, but not big enough to get the chest through. Uh, is, is Rocky taking a swing, or are you trying a different approach? Well, I was going to suggest I try to make the uh, bottom of the... No, I was going to suggest I see if I can make my hand phase through <laughs> the chest and be able to pull anything that's in there. Oh, what I will. I will warn you that um, all of these power, all of these things that you are coming to understand, uh, do not allow you to interact with magical objects. Gotcha. So you could, you would not be able to get your mage. You could maybe get your mage hand. No, you wouldn't be able to get your mage hand through, and you wouldn't be able to pull the object back out. That's fair. Limitations to chaos. You got yeah. your hand stuck. <laughs> ah. <laughs> In the, in the service of of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm if, ready if to say the words. Yeah, whack it with your stick. If I try again, the the DC is going to be higher, though, right? If I try to convert. Um, no. I I there's nothing in the the rules is written that say that, so I'm not. Okay. I'm not gonna I'm, I'm going to say one more time and. and <laughs> then rocky go but and i'm going to try one more time to okay. widen the water pool okay one more intelligence check 14 uh <laughs> oh man <laughs> um so yeah combined with the hole you have already made you you got lucky in this two-step process Combined with the hole you've already made, you are able to clear enough space that the chest drops out from the floor. Okay. Uh, almost immediately, it is followed by the flying snake, uh, your little snake friend with wings. And you hear a roar come from inside the cabin, like a toad roar if there's such a thing. Ooh, okay. All right. Should we run away? Should we super run away? <laughs> <laughs> can we run away we still have paths without trace we still have it up so it's like if we can like he won't see us the snake seems a lot easier to deal with we're close enough together right we're still i mean we yeah. could but but i haven't had a chance to identify to see if this is an object i mean i could because uh, i've had two two heat sources right like one of them is yeah. literally in my arms right now yeah and the other is yeah up at enough. the toad so like well this this snake is coming at you so if you're if you have not if you're not making a snap decision we are going to roll for initiative yeah yeah <laughs> <Fair enough>. <laughs> lucky <laughs> um so if if that's uh well potentially did did uh was this past uh friar pips like are we out of that uh i'm losing my words things no worries my ready to action my yes you're ready to action yeah i mean your action is ready you have heard a roar this thing has not moved out of the cabin and started to come underneath yet but yeah. the snake was right on top of the chest okay. and it has a fly speed so it is okay it is coming out of this hole. So we are going to roll for initiative. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a fight, but we're going to roll so that we can negotiate this. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you all want to roll for initiative. Okay. Hang on. Hey, 20. I, can... I got 
I can reroll nice. that, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have advantage on initiative rolls. So. <laughs> 11. Okay. So, so we have 11 for Friar Pip. 10 for we me. Have 10 for 20 you. for me. And we uh, momentarily. Oh, there oh, we and go. Rocky, I'm back. Rocky's five. got a five. All right. Got us an encounter, y'all. Sort of. Yep. I said next. Oh, no. There we go. All right. Uh, I have no okay. idea what's going on. I just had a child slip and fall in the bathroom. Oh, so no. He's being taken care of now. But. Is everything okay? okay? Uh, not yet. <laughs> but I think it will be. Okay. Otherwise, we were going to take a break anyway, so we could also take our break here and come back and resolve this on a major cliffhanger. Ooh. Yes, let's do that it. That's a good, good. timer. Yeah. So let's, we're going to go ahead, uh, y'all, and take about a 10-minute break here, um, and uh, we will be back to figure out where this encounter goes in just a few minutes.
welcome back. We are we are back. Hopefully you are back. We have all had a snack. Um, and we are going to pick up right where we left off with the exciting action of everyone having rolled initiative, uh, which was good because then I messed up my encounter tracker, so it's all fixed. Uh, which means we have left things with this chest falling through the floor and Ash catching hold of it. Uh, and almost immediately followed by this uh, zippy little flying snake who is headed straight for uh, Ash because he's the nearby target holding on to the chest. But Elena, you are up first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it with my sword. See what happens. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll to hit. Uh, let's see. All right. So that is out of game. <laughs> this is action. And then with whatever. Let's see. Attack. Longsword. You can you have move action. You have a, a action and a bonus action if you have bonus actions. So this is your action to attack. That seems wrong. But... Um, that's a damage yep. roll. So yeah. You want to <laughs> wanna roll to hit first? Roll to hit. I'm sorry. Walk me through this again. Apologies to viewers. Yep. So, are you? <laughs> so it should be like using... the middle one, the one that says hit slash DC. Yep. Middle one. That long uh -huh. sword plus one. Yep, is yep, that yep. What you're... Got it. Oh. Okay. Six plus one is so a seven. Oof. Yeah. Um, sadly, uh, wait a minute. Let me double check. <laughs> no, you do not hit the tiny flying snake. He is dodgy. Um. And uh, do you have a any bonus actions you would like to use? Let's see, I'll see if you have any bonus oh. actions. Uh, you can heal, but nobody needs healing. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> nope. um, okay, I... so that means it it is the. Uh, do you want to move? Uh, can I move? Because I, I feel awesome. like I tried to hit it and kind of just flailed because I don't really understand how to move in this. So I'm kind of just like, <laughs> I'm kind of spin and then like, okay, back up. You can still move 30 feet in any direction you would mentally like to do so, if you want, or you can stay put. Okay, I'll make sure I am, like, still within 30 feet of the group and kind of okay. start floating back to them, but out of, out of like, reach as much as I can of Snake, so I can kind of reposition. Okay. Uh, that means it is Flying Snake's turn, uh, and he is going to attempt to bite you, Ash. Okay. Because that's just the kind of thing a little flying snake's going to do. Sadly for him, flying snake rolled a, uh, a nat one, so a total of seven. That misses. Somehow manages to bite his own tail. <laughs> and is very upset about it. Oh, no. Poor snake, kind of. Uh, Friar Pip, it is to you. Okay. Um, so a very angry flying snake. Yeah, first of all, do I, like, know anything about this snake being a druid? What type of snake it is? Anything you know like? that this is a tiny flying snake, and he will try to bite you, and if he does, he will do some ouchies of the piercing and poison type. Okay. You also know he is not very hardy, so if somebody you know hit him. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna smack him with my shillelagh. Ooh. Okay. Um, assuming I'm in range. Uh, yeah, because you all are pretty close together, and you can you can close the distance easily enough. Oh, yeah, and was that a nat 20 or was it an 18? Okay, uh, go ahead and roll your damage. I'm pretty sure you just uh, demolished this guy. Yeah, uh, this flying snake is now deceased. Uh, and as much... <laughs> Did it leave behind and... a heart? It <laughs> did not leave behind I'm going to go heart. back and get that heart. Um, like, mark me. You do notice as you uh, knock it <laughs> like a baseball bat just swinging away <laughs> uh, that a tiny round stone drops from, like, clutched under one of its wings, and it just sort of hangs there because there is no gravity here. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, I think you could, It's that's an object interaction. You can just grab it. It is a small blue... Uh, smoothed out stone. You don't know what it might go with yet. Um, and we may have lost you again for our pip, so you may want to check here. <laughs> um, do you want to, you, you have a bonus action or and, and or a move action if you would like. Okay. Ash, it is to you. There is now a deceased flying snake just laying limply in the air. <laughs> okay. 
Friar Pipped has grabbed hold of this small blue stone that it seemed to have tucked into its wing and now has dropped. Uh, what do I hear coming from? Up? Oddly and up, up above. Oddly enough, you hear nothing. Okay. Uh... There is no movement. There is no sound of angry giant slot or red slot. There is just silence. Okay, I'm going to think my way up through how big is the hole now i guess i should ask if can i yeah you're small enough okay. you could you could get through rocky might have some trouble trying to get through the hole you made okay but... <laughs> so i'm gonna stick my head up and and look and see sure uh, yeah it is standing uh looking out the door where it had been roaring and looked as if it was about to go um but it is just standing there Almost catatonic. No homunculus pun intended. Thanks. <laughs> oh. uh, it is no longer moving. You're not sure why, but it seems to be stuck in park. <laughs> okay. I'm going to wave everybody up and then actually actually <laughs> climb up into the, uh, the cabin. Okay. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I will say we are out of combat. Um, until, mm -hmm. unless you do something further that causes this thing to get, pro to provoke. Um, but as Friar Pip pointed out to you, this thing is controlled by something, and you appear to have taken out what was controlling it. So, oh. <laughs> it is no nice. longer aggressive towards you. So that's, it's the <laughs> little stone, stone I okay. have? So, okay. Well, so, I'm also gonna look around, look at the thing, because you said there was something on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to figure out if it's that little, I'm assuming it is, but that little antenna kind of thing that's that's radiating the heat. And I, um, I still yeah. have the chest in one arm. Right. Um, yes, and it is not quite an antenna. What you notice, because you, you are able to get closer now, is it looks kind of like a circlet or a, a thin crown or, or sort of piece that you might wear. Um, part of it is lodged inside of this thing's head and part of it is sticking out um and there are some stones on it that you see that match the one friar pip just grabbed from the snake okay. <laughs> i'll keep going until anyone stops me so are you guys coming up uh yeah i mean yeah, i'll no, come I, up I, too I and i'm gonna ask you about your amulet of hot cold like is it glowing? Oh, it's real. It's real hot when he is next to the the slot because he's holding one item in the hand hand and the other one is okay. Within reach. All right, so it's these two stones. Let's get them and go. Yeah. So I will see if I can get the crown out off yeah. and out. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the um, mentally moving an object thing. Okay. Uh, so once again, you're going to roll uh, an intelligence check. This is not a very large item, so it's a pretty low DC, but you do have to try and get it out. There are other ways to get this out, too, but, you know. Uh, let's go this way first. Messy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the least messy way. I think that'll do. Oh, yeah. No problem. Nat 20. Um, in sort of a creepy, gross way, this thing's head sort of splits open a little bit, and this circlet comes out. Uh, it is, in fact, a little gold circlet. Um, there are spaces for nine stones, but mm. three of those spaces are empty. Uh, but Friar Pip is holding the fourth. Okay. Uh, or sorry, there are nine. Let me double. Uh, that's not what I meant. There are nine stones. Um, yes, three of them are still missing, minus the one that Friar Pip is holding. So that is, you have six out of the nine okay. stones essentially. Did we I'm open just... the chest yet? No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask if we could take a few minutes because I'd like to see if I can open it and see what we can find inside. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Good plan. So, I'd like to check for traps. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead and check for traps. Check, check what for those it, traps. I don't know that I've ever done this. So is this perception or investigation? Uh, I think it's. I'm going to do investigation. Yeah, okay. I think it's investigation because yeah. you're it's more manual than anything else 22. or for Arcana, really. Ooh, nice. uh, yeah, uh, this this trap, this, this, chest, this chest is not trapped. This is not a trap. <laughs> uh, no, this is not trapped. Uh, whoever put it here assumed that the two guardians would do their due diligence. Okay, can I open it or is it locked? 
Uh, it is locked. Okay, then I'd like to... But it is something that is pickable if there's two, at least two of you in this party who can pick locks, to my knowledge. <laughs> I, I've i got thieves tools, so... Yeah, I mean, if Elena wants to give you a hand, you can even roll it with advantage, because you both have this skill set. I can help. Maybe okay. maybe Ash doesn't want Elena's <laughs> No, I will do that. Uh, so it's dex plus... It is dex plus proficiency bonus. Okay. So let me... Do I roll this as well, or is this his first? No, if you are going to help Ash, then uh, Ash will roll it with advantage, because you're just sort of watching and being like, nope, nope, try that Perfect. instead. Okay. So... If I'm going to float around closer to the door that the dude is standing... Well... Yeah, closer to the door that the dude is standing at, in case he okay. decides to wake up, and also because I'm tired of floating around in space. Okay. I want to stand on you can, Yeah, you can definitely stand on this floor. Okay, that'd be a 16. Yeah, so this chest pops open, uh, and it is uh, much larger than it actually needed to be, but perhaps that was the intention to make it harder to steal. Um, inside is a box that some of you have seen before in the Gallery of Gizmos, once on a pedestal. Uh, now not on a pedestal. Okay, I'm. But seated inside this box. I'm gonna ask everybody to see if if they're okay with uh, uh, taking a few minutes, and I'd like to ritually cast identify. Okay. Uh, as long as our friend is still just chilling. Well, you have removed the thing from his head, and he has not seemed to do anything since. It's a little confusing. It's like it, it's used to being given orders and is not, so he's just sort of sitting there. It does not seem aggressive towards you. Um, Can so I you're gonna... ready yes. in action to attack him what, if, yep. if and when he wakes up? Sure. Um, so you're casting Identify, which only picks one item. Okay, so are you doing the box? Yes, the box and the chest. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you cast Identify, and that tells you some stuff. <laughs> it tells you uh, if it's a magic item, its properties, and how to use them. Uh, whether it requires two men, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the, uh, the box um, is, uh, let's see. The box is... You're not quite sure if it's the box itself or the contents of the box, uh, which we'll, we will get to in a minute, uh, <laughs> is radiating some sort of um, abjuration music, magic, as I believe, if I have that correct. That's Something defensive. that's the ability to... No, sorry, wrong one. Whatever it is that manipulates would manipulate something. I have a cheat sheet, but I don't have it up. Okay. Um, So the, the box itself has some the, the magic that it has taken on, but you suspect it's more about what's inside the box. Okay. Uh, that being said, you do know, as you were spending a lot of time looking at this item, uh, it is a essentially a cube. Um, I don't know, like close to a foot by a foot. Uh, each side of the cube has some numbers on it. Um, and there is a number in the top left corner of each side, there is a number in the center of each side, and there is a number in the lower right of each side. Each of those numbers is, uh, no, I'm sorry, there is, and then on, uh, there are six different sides. Um, the, each number has an underline underneath it, so you can tell the orientation like you would maybe on a, like a D6 or something. Um, but on the last side, all three numbers are blank. Like, there's just a blank with no number. It's a puzzle. It we, is. We gotta open it. We gotta beat the number puzzle. And I will start giving you numbers if you are choosing to try and solve this puzzle now. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It's up right? To you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's solve the puzzle. I'm just saying, you. do you want to solve it here or do you want to go... <laughs> do you oh, yeah, let's solve it up? here. We, <laughs> okay. we got a little impatient to move on last time. Okay. Well, I was uh, also thinking, if we're not in a hurry, we could take a rest, which might help with Rocky. 
but I don't know how dangerous it would be in staying for a rest in limbo. You think this would probably be a dangerous place to rest. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. I'm not saying don't. Uh, I just I think it could be. Okay, let's <laughs> let's see if we can solve this puzzle. Okay. Uh, so I have to figure out how to give you all this information in a useful way. Because uh, I have a <laughs> I have a puzzle and I have it all figured out in my head. Um, let me do this. Okay, so it's a cube. It's a cube. There are six sides. Each side has three numbers. One in the top left one in the center and one in the bottom right. Um, I'm going to take my little uh, puzzle here and put it in a document where I can show you everything except the solutions. And then I will screen share that with you. Unfortunately, our audience will not get to see it. It didn't occur to me to try and solve that problem very easily. <laughs> can, well, that's what, well, okay. Mm -hmm. I could, I could project the image where my face is actually, if you send me the image, <laughs> I figured out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I take a quick look at the tiara and look at the crystals? Because it says we have, you said we have six of them, right? Six out of the nine are in there. Yeah, you have not identified that item yet, so. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, I just want to look at it and see what I see, and then I might. Okay. Uh, I might cast identify after that. Okay. Of course, everything got real slow when I tried to put this in a way that I can share it with y'all. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because that's the way the internet likes to be. Yep. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> yes. Make a plan. The DM specifically requested we have fun, so we have fun. <laughs> I did. I did wreck you control. I mean, you are in limbo. You can create things from nothing, so. Think we could play limbo. <laughs> you could get a limbo in limbo. While y'all are being creative, I'm going to go kind of float out and grab my little homunculus heart. And bring it back Aww. in case I can I'm, use it again. And why she does that, I'm going to check and see if she's still holding on to the wand. Well, since you've said it, I, I did. I put the homunculus <laughs> uh, heart in in my pocket, next to the wand, where I'm like, hey, da, da, da. gonna just keep hold of that till we need it. Can I yeah. can I imagine a a twin heart? Aw. So the homunculus? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want, uh, you would have to roll. Let's see. That's very tiny. So you can roll an intelligence check. I don't know why you're saying, aw, he's clearly going to use it for some sort of sleight yeah, of hand. He's going to use it for nefarious purposes. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> uh, that's a six. Uh, you actually successfully make a tiny heart. Okay. It was just enough to beat it. Um, so I have screen shared uh, part of the puzzle with you. If you would like me to explain what my little table means, I can do that. But basically, the first side, I'll break it down for you. The first side has a one in the upper left corner, a one in the center, and a one in the lower can, right. Can you change Second the side. magnification? Sure. Yeah, I don't know what it's uh, on the. Better. Okay, well, I was just going to do it on the... You could just do it on the Google Doc Whoops. itself, but... That's what I was doing. Is it? No, you were you were weirdly? doing it on the on Chrome. Oh, on the browser. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. You could just change. Yep. Come on. Like one fifty would probably be enough. It's, it's right below you. Like. Oh. Come get on. rid of I'm insert, and then there's. I can't. My thing's being real slow. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> my internet's being real slow. That's why. <laughs> it's, it's being uncooperative. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. So the, the first square has a one in the upper left, a one in the center, and a one in the bottom. Uh, the second side has a four in the upper left, a 16 in the center, and a 64 in the so bottom So it's going right. to be... These are factorials, aren't they? Yeah. So it's... Uh. it's uh, so the first one is one, one squared, one cubed. And then it's two squared so it's going to be 36 96 no that can't be right these numbers are correct right but so it's not exactly what you think it is you're close but it's not quite you have part of it right 
I mean, the upper left number is 36, right? I mean, we're, we're agreed with that. Yes. Oh, 36 times 36, mm -hmm. which, yeah. Yep. Right. Why did you put math in here out of game? You know I'm here. Because I was told people wanted to solve. This is not the same <laughs> thing. Can, can, uh, yeah. <laughs> are you, can we use a calculator or do you want us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I had to use one to double check. All right, so 36, so then 1296. All right, are you doing it? And then, well, I want to. Okay, so then it's 36 times 12, 96. Uh, 46,656. I gotta stop sharing for a second because I didn't write my numbers down, but I think I... Okay. Gotta go back to... What did you say again? <laughs> 46,656. Uh, so, right now you are still staring at I'm, I'm not necessarily going to... You have to figure out what to do with these numbers to find out if they're correct, first of all. Right. So you have this sixth side that this sixth side of the cube that has lines as if there should be a number there, but there is no number written there. So, so we need to figure out how to edge uh, it on or get it on. Yeah. There. I'm going to just imagine the numbers appearing. Uh, okay, roll that, roll that intelligence check. I should have given you this power. <laughs> I assume anyone can do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Anybody, anybody can I do this. I was like leaving you to do it. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> I'm not helpful. Uh, yeah, you have you have no problem um, imagining. This is a very. It's not a big big space. Um, you have no problem imagining these numbers appearing, and as you do, they they sort of appear almost as if they're being handwritten in on these lines on the cube. Um, that that. You did that. <laughs> the numbers have appeared, but. Is there any pressure? I think if you put pressure on any of the sides, does it do anything? Do you do that? I, I'm not yeah. holding it, but. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. I will physically, physically manipulate it with my hands. Uh, if you, are you, um, okay. I'm trying to ask this question without being leading because I'm not trying to lead you, but uh, where on the side are you pushing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I told you I don't know how to ask this without being leading. I mean, just try something and see. No, <laughs> I, I promise you so there are horrible the, consequences. The, so out of character, the reason this is stumping me is because for Christmas, I got... <laughs> a six-sided puzzle box <laughs> that there is a very specific combination that I had to do in order to open it. So all I'm thinking of right now is that cube and how I had to start and turn and turn and turn in a specific order. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with one. And okay. Whatever. As you push, as you push on a one, uh, it lights up that portion of the cube, like that upper corner turns, lights up with a blue white light. Okay. Then I'm gonna go to two. Uh, the, the second side. Yeah. Okay. And, and do what? And press, press the two, or no, wait. <laughs> press the four. No, I'm. Should we press all the ones with the numbers on them? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go side to side to side. I'll go back to everything on one side in just a minute. I, I want to go and press <laughs> like the okay. upper left-hand corner of each side in order okay. from... As you go to the second side and press the four, which is the number in the upper left corner there, uh, it turns red and, and then it goes out, as does the blue-white light on the wall. Okay, so I'll go back to that side and then do one... So upper left, middle, yep, and then bottom right. 
Okay, all three of those numbers, be, the, as you press them, a uh, blue-white light appears behind them. They sort of glow a little bit. Okay. Uh, do we notice anything different? Uh, do we notice anything uh, with the, the tiara thingy? No. Okay. Um, You're just holding on to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I'll... We'll see what happens if I turn it to the second side and go for... 16. Okay. So the 4 lights up blue. Okay. The 16 turns red and it resets. Everything goes out. Hmm. Could it Can we have the Can I have Yes, the... I was just going to bring it up again cuz I was like that might help you. Uh... So we started on side 1, correct? Mhm. Mm so we did yep. one, one, one. So maybe we just go in uh, numerical order. So one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, well, nine. The no, that. the first column are just the side numbers. Ignore okay, so, that. Well, okay. so you but with the same concept, right? right? One, like one, 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 four, nine, four, nine, 16, 25. 36, 64, so in that order. Sure. So we're going, you want to do them in numerical order. Try that. Because uh, it was the 16 that tripped us up. Counting up. So 1, 1, 1, 4, 9, 6, 25, 36. No. 1, 1, 1, 4, 9, 16. But which 16? I guess press the 16 on side four and then press 16 on side two and then move on okay. to 25 yep then you're still good 36 then yep. 64 81 yep. 256 625 729 what? you're still good and then the really big numbers in order. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you that okay. if you just want to say that. You, you solved the sequence, which is pushing, putting them in numerical order, not regardless of which side they were on. So. Oh. <laughs> Good call. Okay, so as you press the, uh, as I recall, it was 46,656 in the lower right-hand cube, or lower right-hand spot on the sixth cube, uh, the entire cl cl cube emanates a white-blue light, um, and uh, whatever happens to be the side pointing up while you're looking at that pops open, uh, and you find inside um, a key to mm. a door. Mm. Uh, it is a relatively... Um, it doesn't look like a a key that you're probably used to. It's not like a sort of skeleton style key with a big hole. Um, it's a more small intricate key uh, with a hole at the top, a very hole at the top that you could string it on something. Um, and across the key is etched 221B. Oh, nice. As soon as, as soon as this key pops from the box or the box lid pops open, um, all of a sudden, in another corner from where you've been <laughs> making various holes in the floor, <laughs> um, what look like a set of cellar doors appear. Just in the corner. Let's open up with a key. Agreed. Right? <laughs> there is no keyhole. There is no keyhole. There are just handles. You could just... This is not necessarily where the key goes. That's... Mm. Um, maybe we cautiously open... Yeah, I was going to say, actually, look first at investigation, just to see if there's anything. I mean, I know you said it's not locked, but just... Mm -hmm. It's trapped or danger. Yep. yep. Go, go ahead and uh, give me some investigation rolls. Are we all rolling? If you want, anybody can roll. Just not doing great. So we have a 12 eight. from Ash. Thank God for... 8 from Rocky. Four. Thank God for bonus. Uh, 14 from Elena. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't think these uh, these doors are trapped. Uh, you you wonder if there's some... Obviously their appearance is tied to the key and 
But yeah, the doors themselves are not trapped. They're just doors. They don't look particularly ominous. You don't know where they go, but <laughs> where it goes, but. So my mage hand, it, it'll only disappear when I will it. Dismiss it, I believe. So yeah. I, I will go ahead and let, I'll, I'll send the mage hand over and have it open the the cellar doors just just to check. Okay. Um, it opens one of the doors because, you know, uh, and it uh, you can all see a very, it, it, you can't see very far because it's very dark, um, but there's a short stairwell that descends and then as it levels off, you think you can see the bottom of a door. Oh, uh, one thing, am I feeling, am I sensing that the the key is is radiating the or where the the box the box was the item the key is a kind of the thing that was inside the box that you're now re realizing you need to have okay so you have the, both of the items you have the circlet and you have the box you have found the two items that were in this place okay so ash I would is going like to uh, uh, cat, uh, use magic awareness mm -hmm. before we go any farther um, what does magic uh, awareness sense do? Sense the location of spells and magic items within 60 feet. It's sort of like detect magic. Yeah, it's but... detect magic. Okay, so you have all the magic items that are on yourselves, plus the, the two, the circlet, the loose stone, the box. <laughs> um, the key is oddly enough not magic, like radiating magic. It seems to be a mundane key. You're not quite sure what that's about yet. Um, and at the bottom of the stairwell the door that you see is radiating teleportation magic teleportation <laughs> well unsurprising ash is gonna pocket the key okay and does does rocky tell us this stuff yeah, I'll I'll say there's teleportation magic down there and mention that that doesn't seem like the key is magical for some reason. Also, can we hurry up and get out of here? Okay, so uh, invest. I'm gonna walk down and look at the door. Okay, it is a plain wooden door with a doorknob. There is no keyhole, just a doorknob. Okay, I'm going to. So there is a doorknob though. Uh, there is a doorknob, yes. I guess I need to keep doing the roguey things. Check for traps. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm just getting tired. Of, I'm just going to walk through the open one. Okay, so you're going down the stairs with yeah. uh, with um, Bash, okay? Yeah, Limbo is is anybody else? Because this could get real interesting. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I'll, I'll follow. There's no reason to stay in there. I'd rather see what's going on. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a boring DM, but once again, not a trapped door. Okay. <laughs> How dare you? Then I'll open the door. As you open the door, uh, all of you experience... It's almost like using the amulet, but it is not the amulet's power. Uh, as you open this door, there is a flash of amethyst light, and you find yourself shifting from the darkness of this odd staircase into, or this sort of little staircase, into the brightness of another staircase. You are on a landing, and there are, it's about 10 feet wide. There are stairs leading up to your left and down to your right. They appear to be winding loosely along a curving wall. And you can see them for a while, and then they disappear into this sort of light purple fog um, after, a, you know, a, a hundred feet or so in either direction. Um, as you are taking this in, the door behind you, which on this side appears as a plain wooden door with a knob painted black, disappears and is replaced by the nondescript stone. Uh, the landing and the stairs are about 10 feet wide. There is no inside railing, um, but the inside of these stairs is also very confusing. There is this purple fog, again, that sort of engulfs everything, and you can't see across it. And if you look up, it seems to be a cylinder at the core of whatever space you are in. Um, if anybody would like to roll a history or arcana check to figure out perhaps where you are, you can do so. 
before I give you a little more. We'll see what how much you get. <laughs> okay, Friar Pip rolled a 17. Okay. 18 for me. Nine. Doing great. Nine. 10 for me. Okay, so 18. And do I notice, uh, is there any change in the amulet of planar travel? The No, that is, um, there doesn't seem, if there, you, you, it, because you didn't travel with the amulet, maybe it's confused, you're not quite sure, you seem to be, in, maybe there is not a, uh, an item in this place, uh, because you, you traveled through a different way, through a door that appeared when you had the key. Um, this is not a place that any of you are particularly familiar with. Um, we had one, had an 18, uh, and a 17. So for a couple of you, um, Ash and Friar Pip, there is a, a tickling in your brain of sorts that there's a, a place that you've heard of, um, something about a staircase, uh, as a way to travel between places. But you don't, mm -hmm. this is not a place that is written about or talked about or discussed at great length. So the, the information that you've had resources to, or the resources that you've had access to would not speak in great detail of this. Um, you do know that you are, as you look around a little more, you see um, that the stairs that go in either direction are a little curious. They um, seem to be made of different materials. Sometimes you'll see two to three steps in a row that are the same. Um, but most of the time with every riser, it seems to change. There's ice or lava or gold or a gemstone or leather or a, some sort of metal or alloy. Um, Friar Pip, you might, you think there's one that might even be made of vellum, which seems like a strange metal for a stair riser, but there it is. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious pattern, but you are standing now on a, uh, a, a landing with stairs going in either direction and no door behind you. Is this the time to use one of the wand charges? Well, that seems strong. Sure. That's that. That seems like a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, Would you like me to do it? Nope. I'm good. I got this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you do take the wand out and uh, attempt to use one of the charges. Uh, it does not pulse or show off any light or direct you in a particular direction. You do know that it only finds things within 30 feet of you. And you're on a 10 foot by 10 foot, or 10 foot by 20 foot landing. So perhaps this is not the location. Mm. Or a location that is going to give you anything. So yeah, I, I would have got, okay. I was going to ask if we wanted to try up or down to get a little closer. But I think checking to make sure that the door behind us was definitely gone is still good. So, yep, it is gone. Okay. So, I could do a thing. Um, I, I have spells that both let me speak to animals and summon a, a bunch of animals. So, <laughs> I could. I could animal party. Yeah, I could okay. summon multiple animals to like investigate, um, and they can. Some of them, they can fly, like the animals that summon. And then I could have them be able to talk. And we could, like, I don't know, scout it out that way. Can I make a, another homunculus and send it oh, around? You can. Idea. You have two more two more uh, infusions as well. Okay. Well, I'm going to, while they're doing those things, I'm going to look around for any clues since I've seen footprints before, I guess I'll look mm -hmm. for footprints. Okay. So, Friar Pip, are you making some animal friends? Or or are we going to rely on homunculus for now? I feel like the homunculus is really good. If, okay, if we so, need to, I will I'll hop in, pun intended, with some animals. Uh, homunculus uh, is successfully created. Which way is homunculus going? Um, up or down? Anyone have a preference? Down. All right. So I, I. Fair enough. So I send the homunculus uh, down the stairs, and and homunculus flies. Is. Uh, oh, hey, it gra oh, okay. Yeah, gravity. 
we're not in limbo anymore, so gravity has reasserted itself. Uh, where you're standing, as far as you can tell, yes. Okay. My my question was, is homunculus walking or flying? Uh, flying, because we don't know what's going on with those stairs. Okay. Uh, so homunculus flying down the mm -hmm. stairs. Okay, uh, what, what is your, essentially, your command? How, how far do you want it to go before it comes back? Because it can't communicate with you. So you, you tell me what you're telling it to do. I think we want it to... Do we want it to go through the fog? Or just kind of look at it and come back? I'd say look and see what it can see first, and then uh, maybe... Use it to go into the fog. Okay. So I'll just send it to observe not to go through. It is going down. And okay. he's flying. So, yeah, for you all, the fog sort of uh, settles, has, has settled. So you can see a certain distance, and then it disappears into the fog. Um, if you send the homunculus down to the edge of that fog and then tell it to come back to you, is that what you're doing? I think so. Or are you sending it in? Not in. Okay. Not all the way in. Yeah. Okay. If it, fl it flies down to the edge of where this fog sort of creeps back over the stairwell from your view, um, and it comes back to you and uh, with a little bit of snark manages to convey, I don't know what you're talking about. I can see just fine down there. Interesting. I convey this to the group in case they don't speak homunculus. They, they don't. It understands you. It doesn't really speak. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to figure out a way that it would communicate useful information sure. to you. Um, I guess a, a better way to say this would be if you move in that direction, the, that line essentially moves. Meaning you can only see a certain distance right now. If you move 10 feet, the line that you can see is going to move 10 feet. Sure. So by the time it got down there, it could see much further down the stairs. Okay, so it's acting like a a normal fog. Fog bank, yeah. yeah. Okay. But it's purple. But purple. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> uh, okay, so assuming we know that this is like acting like a normal fog bank and nothing happened to the homunculus, she figured out what's going on with those stairs. Make sure nothing is a trap. And, and I will say these are slightly wide stairs, like you can step all the way onto one and then stop and then step onto the next. Or if you have a long enough stride, you could just keep going. But we wouldn't want to step on them because some of them are like lava, but some of them look normal. Well, I say lava. What I really meant was um, like uh, volcanic rock. I didn't know. Uh, that I definitely picked lava. They're, they're made of different, <laughs> yeah. different materials. I'm sorry, I said lava, but what I meant was volcanic rock. They're all made of different materials. None of them are appear to be inherently uh, harmful to you. They're just different. So I'll ask the homunculus to kind of settle in and check out some of the stairs uh, down again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the homunculus steps on the first step off the landing, uh, which is made of what looks to be like a jasper stone or any or something like that. And the homunculus is a tiny creature, so it's kind of funny. You watch it step, and it begins to slide slightly to the right. Not like forcefully, like it's going to get slammed into the wall or anything. Um, but it's sort of sliding, and you see it kind of like pushing back like it's trying to move. Uh, as it steps to the step below that, which looks to be like it's some sort of metal alloy or something. Uh, you see it right itself, and then it sort of slides forward a little bit. And then as it steps down on the next one, it's almost like it's being pulled up a little bit. And it's always able to resist. It's not, like, forcefully pulled in a direction. But to your point about gravity, it might be a little strange with these stairs, too. Okay, so the, the drunk homunculus, he can still fly, so he can kind of <laughs> come back, yep, up. Okay. back up. So if he keeps going, I, I, presumably if he keeps going, it, it kind of follows that same pattern where it's just a little wonky. Yeah, he always seems to be pulled slightly in a direction okay. as if there's some sort of force. But it's not, like I said, it's not, it's not like, um, abrupt or harsh. It's just, gravity's a little weird here. Like it was in the last place you were. And my investigation? Uh, you do not see anything to suggest anyone has passed through here in a long time. Uh, and as you are, uh, well, no, go ahead. Never mind. What do y'all? Where do you all want to go? 
so when when the homunculus went down did and the fog receded did it recede for all of us or just for the homunculus just for the homunculus like you, you would have to get closer to where the edge of this is and that it would in theory recede for you so right. how how far from from fog to fog are like what's uh, what's the visual that like so you can see uh let me think these stairs are so much math uh you can see about uh 80 feet downward the, the stairs down and 80 feet upward okay and these are kind of just like i said they're sort of gently curving along this external wall can I use my proficiency with my mason tools to sort of give the first stair or two a tap and see if they seem like they would be solid enough to hold me? Because I'm really getting impatient mm -hmm. just standing here. Yeah, go ahead and get you can you go ahead and give it a tap if you want to roll. Uh, mason tools would be let's do strength plus proficiency, strength bonus plus proficiency bonus. So a twenty plus six for you. All right. Uh, am I at disadvantage for this? Uh, this is still an ability check, so yes. Alright. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Right. Natural uh, one plus as far three. As, you can, as far as you can tell, these stairs are uh, perfectly fine to hold you. Uh, but as you are tapping at the stair, you hear a voice uh, come from the fog below you. It's a very nice sounding voice. It sort of cuts through the the murkiness of the fog and it says this way i'm down here do do all of us hear that or just rocky okay yes everybody hears that and then it says they really don't like to be tapped <laughs> you're fine to walk on them huh i'll head down yeah okay too. yep so you all walk, and that voice sounded remarkably close, but you do find that you have to walk for a while before, you know, you actually get to another landing. This one is larger than the one you were on, um, and it seems to jut out a little further, so it's about 15 feet wide, into the fog in the center, which sort of gives way and leaves room for it. Uh, this is particularly helpful because standing at the uh, this landing in front of a door uh, up against the wall is a very tall woman with uh, solid white eyes and strawberry blonde hair. She's wearing a, a loose dress that's belted at the waist. Um, but what catches your attention uh, more likely are the gold bracers on her arms, the substantial gold mace on her hip, and the very large white wings, which are folded up behind her, pretty much blocking the door. Hmm. And she smiles when you approach. She seems very nice. Do we recognize what kind of creature this is? Um, yes. I, sh I guess some of you would have a concept of what a deva is and would have maybe some idea of an angelic creature of some sort. Uh, you know that they are, are gen generally very good and protectors of the good. Well, Pip is going to be very odd, considering he's a, uh, fr a Franciscan monk, so <laughs> he's going to, like, genuflect. Whoa. Lots of genuflex. Uh, she certainly... <laughs> forgot we were going to have a fryer in the game. Uh, <laughs> she says, uh, if you have come this far, you must have a purpose. Um... She uh, gestures in the direction of Ash and says, you have the key. And she moves slightly and you see a small uh, keyhole behind her in the door. And the door, the piece of it that you can see is um, sort of, it, it looks like it was made of copper, but it is patinaed, so it's sort of greenish brown in color. She's not moving so you can open it, she's moving to show you the keyhole and then she steps back in front. But she knows what you have. <laughs> I'm gonna say to her, um, holy lady, um, I have so many questions. Uh, but then also I mostly make beer, so I can't think of any of them. I'm like, how many angels balance on the head of a pin? Like, I feel like I've heard the father talk about that at some point, but I can't call it to mind. 
She um, <laughs> she laughs and she says, "I'm sure you have many questions. Unfortunately, time is of the essence now. Um, perhaps perhaps we could speak of them again. Um, I am far more concerned about what waits for you on the other side of this door. What awaits for us on the other side of the door? Well, I presume you've come for the master." The mastermind. The Gith Yankee? You have the key. We have the key. Someone has to defeat him. Why? Well, because of the havoc he has wrought in other places and whatever evil he would do here. Is he. And Wait, in, in all of the planes. That doesn't sound like the person we were told about this. Holmes? Is that what they were called? Holmes just says, she shakes her head and she says, oh, oh, the one in the distant world who fought, who fought the mastermind. So this is Moriarty? And she pauses for a moment as if she's going through the knowledge in her head and she says, ah, yeah, that's what they called him in one place. Why is he here? Is he trapped? Well, he's not here. He's in the plane behind me. He is holed up there, plotting. I, I know not, but I, I, I can't go in there. Why don't you show her the note? Ash, you seem to have kept everything. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop us if we go, go in? No, you have the key. It must mean that you are sent to rid us of him. Okay. <laughs> She says, uh, I, I cannot go with you. I, I can't set foot in that place. Perhaps I won't. Uh, but if it comes down to it and things are bad, I can perhaps get you some aid or interference, let's say. And she sort of winks in Ash's direction. Um, your, she, she sort of looks for the word employer, has not helped the situation. But what's done is done, and it's gotten you this far. Um, I, I don't know for sure what's on the other side. I, I know where it goes, of course, uh, and you have my sympathies for that. But the infinite staircase, and she sort of gestures with a wing in one direction, is a tricky and shifting place by nature. Where you land precisely will be a bit of luck, and perhaps, and she sort of gestures where you have also tucked away the amulet, that will be of a bit of help. Okay. So... Uh, I'm going to walk forward with the amulet in one hand. I'll pull out the key in another. And I'll unlock the door. And as I go through the door, I'll, I'll imagine this whatever person, Jay, uh, in the hopes that it'll get us to him. Uh, the last thing you hear is her going, uh, not that it makes much difference, but the J stands for Jazzleron. Uh, and the last thing you experience, Friar Pip, is she uh, sort of rests her hand lightly on your head as you pass by her. Oh. <laughs> I'm so uh, blessed. <laughs> uh, and I presume you all are going behind Ash through this door, or not? You can split the party. That could get. <laughs> yeah, I'll go through. Can my can my homunculus go through? Okay. Can I just? Uh, yeah, homunculus can go through. Cool. That's fine. It's essentially a part of you. Um, as you step through this door, this is kind of akin to when you came into the, what you now know to be the infinite staircase. That's what she, uh, your, your new diva friend referred to it as. Um, you experience that similar sort of flash, a little different from the amulet, but close enough. There is a flash of sort of olive green light. And for the moment, you find yourselves in total darkness. Mm. Okay, so... Total darkness, but not floating. Not floating. There is solid ground beneath you. And the, Don't worry, Rocky. You've got solid ground. <laughs> and the amulet? Uh, uh, slightly warm. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do my triangulation. I, I have a torch and okay. a tinderbox. There you go. You gonna light a torch? Yep. Okay. You light a torch, and you find that the four of you are in what equates to a cell. Uh, it is solid stone on three walls. 
uh, and in front of you is a set of bars uh, with a door on hinges with a lock built in. So uh, essentially, a jail cell, <laughs> bars on the front, and stone walls on the other three sides. Pick. I, I have mold with earth. The, okay, and with the torch, you can see uh, what appears to be a large, like a cave ahead of you. So you are in potentially in the back of a cave? You're not quite sure. Yeah, I, I will use my mold earth cantrip to just carve out a little doorway to the side of where the cell is so that we can just walk around. The, okay. The, um, the gate. Easy way out of the cell. No lock picking required. No strength checks required. Why did I even write those? <laughs> um, are you are you gonna make your way through this cave? Before we make our way through the cave, I'm going to pass yeah. without trace using my merge with stone feature. Awesome. So we can all hang out together close enough. Yep. To stay discreet. Yep. Uh, stick together. You've got your torch. Uh, are you gonna make your see see what your pathway out is? I mean, we could walk ahead, or I can try to send the homunculus. That is true. We, we could do, do pass without a trace again. Oh, we just Ro did pass Rocky just did. Rocky just cast it, and homunculus was oh, there, so sorry. I'll give homunculus pass without a trace coverage as well, although it still has to stay kind of close to you, but I'd say let's, it also has that. And say let's just go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Um, you are, as, as you may have guessed, at the back of a very dark cave, but you have torches. You have, uh, and as you progress towards the front of it, uh, or what you assume is the front of it, you, um, you do notice that the amulet is getting warmer, uh, Ash. You also, before you see any sign of light at the end entrance to this cave, you pick up on the smell. It is it is like rancid swamp and and moldering plant life. Um, it just it just smells like rotting, like it's it's real gross. Uh, <laughs> and as eventually you see light ahead of you, and as you come to the mouth of this cave, you find that you are in fact in a jungle. Uh, it is not like a jungle, if any of you have encountered a jungle. Um, the bark and the branch, uh, the bark and the trees themselves, uh, their their trunks are brown, but the leaves are all bright, sort of reddish. Yeah, bright red, basically. Almost scarlet colored. Um, the ground is swampy. There's not really any ground coverage because everything's just rotting. Um, this is probably the worst place you'd ever want to be. <laughs> it's swampy, it's damp, it's smelly, it's hot. Um, but with the aid of the amulet, you can, of course, follow that in potentially a useful direction. Okay. If you wish to do so. Shall we? Yeah, I'll put yeah, out the torch shall. for now. Okay. Yeah, it is light here. I mean, it's not bright, but it is daylight in whatever place you are in. Um, so you don't actually need the torch out here. Um, but if you follow the, the heat of the amulet, you find yourselves at the edge. Uh, eventually, what it looks like a clearing appears ahead of you, or is ahead of you, and you find yourselves in what looks like the ruins of what used to be a temple. So there are pillars, but no roof. It is open sky. There is stone on the ground, uh, but it's sort of slick with the damp and decaying plant life. Um, and as you come up to it, it is an open space. Um, at the far end, you see three figures. And one of them begins to clap a little bit slowly, a little bit sarcastically. Uh, <laughs> um, going to change some things over here. Uh, go ahead and, uh, anybody who wants to roll either, um, History, or mm, let's do history or nature, if you would like to roll either of those. Well, I go somewhere else on my screens. 27. 15. Five. Okay. So, uh, the uh, the angel, the deva that you met in the stairwell, or in the stairwell, in the infinite staircase, 
uh, made mention of the word Githyanki. Uh, Githyanki are uh, not necessarily well known to all of you. Uh, you know that you, you've all heard the stories of them, that they are raiders from the Astral Sea, that they come and take what they want, that they wreak havoc in their path. Um, you, uh, you know that they are generally considered to be evil and, and are selfish and self-motivated. Um, but also, you know, crafty and clever in their, their attempts at all of this. Um, and so you see across the open temple from you, uh, three Githyanki. One who looks a little bit fancier than the other two, the one at the center. Uh, more importantly, uh, Ash, go ahead and roll a perception check. 20. Yeah, his boots look a lot like that slightly odd print you mm. saw back in the Gallery of Gizmos. And as he ceases his uh, slightly sarcastic clap, he does say in common, uh, well, you aren't quite who I was expecting, and you took longer than I expect. So I may as well just get you out of the way, and maybe River Gleam will show up himself. Uh and everybody roll for initiative. Oh. <laughs> oh. Five. Four. Four. Okay. Oof. Oh. Oof. oh, wow. One. Thank oh. Boy, we're killing it today. Thank God for my rapier. So that's okay, a 20. Okay, can y'all can y'all y'all tell me what your totals are so I can put them in my counter. So, Ash is a 22. Elena's okay. a five. Elena, five. I'm actually, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm one. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. use my lucky to re-roll, actually. Okay, yeah, you've got halfling lucky. You are welcome to re-roll. <laughs> uh, so you have a five. Hold on, I'm doing, doing some other things here. So who has the higher decks? Got a plus two. Right. Oh no, my screens are not being cooperative. I guess this. No. Uh, I, are you talking to me? I have a plus two to decks. Okay. Because you Sorry. both have, you both are at five. Mm -hmm. That's. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I have a plus two. Good. Maybe if you go first this time, I won't flail and start spitting away. <laughs> We'll see. Get everybody there. Okay. Okay, so it's three of them. There are three of them. And which uh, which one is the the one who was talking? The one in the middle was okay. the one who was talking. The one who looks slightly fancier than the other two. Uh, I will let me let me give you some info on what you see before we jump right in here. So. Uh, yeah, you see this this one in the middle, uh, he has on him um, two long swords, one on each hip. Um, although he looks a little like he's not, well, well, we'll get there. Um, and then uh, you see two others, uh, one on either side of him, who are both wielding a single great sword, which they are in the process of uh, removing from their sheaths and uh, generally crossing the space in your direction. He is not moving. He's he's a little uh, a little disinterested perhaps. Maybe he doesn't do his own dirty work. <laughs> um, not quite sure. So, let me fix a couple other things here. Get all my ducks in a row. So we got lots of people here. And I get to be lots of people, so that's going to be fun. Uh, Ash, you are up first. Uh, okay. So... Uh, so one of the ones with the great sword. are they, how far away are they? Um, so you are across this, this large space in what looks like it would used to be a temple. Okay. Um, they are about, uh, let's see, they are 60 feet or so away from you. Okay. The, the three of them, although, like I said, two of them do appear to be like they're ready to move on their turn. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I am going to start off 
by using a bonus action for okay. on one of the two. It doesn't it doesn't matter which. Uh, I'm going to do insightful fighting. Uh, okay. Insightful fighting on a bonus action, you make an insight check against a creature that you can see that isn't incapacitated, contested okay. by the target's deception check. If you succeed, so if I succeed, you can use, I can use sneak attack. Okay. Can you use sneak attack when you're out in the open? I guess so. If, With this thing, you can. If you <laughs> succeed, you can use sneak attack against the target, even if you don't have advantage wow. on the attack okay. roll. Also, <laughs> sneak attack conceptually does not make sense. Yeah. It, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really, really mean you're sneaking. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's true. There are a lot of reasons. So, <laughs> so. Uh, All right, so... I'm doing an insight check do. contested against a deception check. Against one of the warriors, not yeah. not your Moriarty slash uh, uh, guy's name that I already forgot that I made up. <laughs> Jaz Jazriel uh, or something? Uh, that's, it's, that's what notes are for. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm real bad with names. Okay. Uh, Jazzle Ron. Okay. <laughs> Jazz, write them down. Jazz, Jazz hands all wrong. That's <laughs> uh, I was thinking, like, Asriel, isn't Asriel like the cat from the Smurfs? <laughs> and he and has he's to also make in um, a deception check. Compass. A deception check. Ooh, fancy. Okay. If the stats would come up. No, no, I don't need a picture of him. I know what he looks like. <laughs> it's like, here's a picture. I'm like, no. <laughs> Wait, no, roll. Real slow roll. Uh, he rolled a seven. Okay. So. So I'm going to then shoot my uh, short bow. Okay. Uh, at him. Okay. And... He's he's somewhat heavily armored, but he's he's a warrior. Mm, Thirteen. Mm. Thirteen does not hit. Okay. Uh. And then I'm going to uh, run and hide behind. Well, I can't literally hide, but run and, and get. Hide. Well, I, I've already used my bonus action. Run and yeah. get behind a one of the pillars. So covered. Yes. Not necessarily hiding, but looking for some partial cover. Yes. Got it. Uh, it is. Uh, it is the. It is Jazzleron's turn. But as I said, he doesn't seem to be making any move to. To do anything yet he he actually just spends his turn staying put at the far end of the temple uh watching he's gonna see he's a very calculating creature as you may have also gathered from what uh lord river gleam told you uh and he is interested to see what he's up against before he decides what he's going to expend in this situation so next up it is the gith yankee that you uh just very unsuccessfully rolled that uh he he got real bad charisma. He's not a not a friendly guy. Uh, so he is gonna take his because uh, we got theater of the mind here, folks. Uh, but y'all are pretty far away, so it is gonna take his in action and his movement to get within uh, combat range because he is uh, wielding this great sword and does not have a um, a ranged weapon. So he's gonna come up and uh, get up in in. Uh, let's see, where would he go? Well, he's probably going to go look for you because you ducked behind that, that pillar, Ash. Uh, so he's going to get to you, but he can't do anything on this turn. So okay. uh, Next up is Elena. Uh, so we're not close enough for combat. Uh, you, have, you have a ranged weapon. You probably are. You've got one who's about uh, probably 20, less than 10 feet from you who's going after. I will m move towards Ash uh, for backup. And that was, that's my turn.
I'm just going to move towards Ash. Uh, and that, that will be my turn. I, I, yeah. I mean, you can get there with your 30 feet of movement. Oh, okay. So you have an action and a bonus action, although you don't really have a bonus action. You have an action, so you could do something. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Radiant Weapon. Uh, magic Weapon okay. grants a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. Um, I can... Let's see. Do, do, do. I can take a bonus action to cause it to shed bright light in a 30-foot radius and blind okay. my attacker. So okay. I'm going to do that. And okay. Also attack. So I just let our I'm going to let our viewers know. Yes, I know I got dropped. Uh, you actually didn't miss much because I was trying to fin fin fix my technical problem and Elena was coming up with a plan. So we are still on Elena's turn. <laughs> yes. Don't worry. It takes me forever to get anywhere. So. <laughs> So yeah, so Radiant Weapon, let's go see if anything happens, so. Uh, so are you putting this on your longsword? Yes. Okay. So 11, but with the bright light, so uh, he, he's blinded. Okay, uh, let's, let me read that real quick, because he might have to make a save. I would be surprised if he just gets blinded, but I could be wrong. Let's see. That would be real cool if he does <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, simple weapon, plus one, charge four charges. Okay, so y you have to, the charges work, um, right, 30 feet. So if you get hit by someone, ah. as a reaction, you can try to block. Apologies, okay, I misread. So, so keep that in mind for if one of them <laughs> hits you with their sword, then you can blind. <laughs> when? Okay. <laughs> I said if. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so okay. 11. So. Uh, rolled a 9 plus 1 for my sword and then plus another for radiant weapon. Okay, so 11 does not yep. hit. Okay. Guy's got, a, got some heavy armor on. Uh, Friar Pip, it is your turn. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask some things about where people are. So okay. old old jazz hands is 120 <laughs> feet back there, correct? <laughs> old jazz hands is about 60 feet away from you. Okay. Across the open the open temple space. Okay. There is still another Gith Yankee warrior right next to him because he has not had oh. his turn yet. So there's oh, two of them together, beautiful. and then about probably 10 or so feet, maybe 15 feet off to your. Like we're gonna go with left side because that's what I'm deciding. Uh, you have um, you have Ash behind a pillar, a Gith Yankee warrior on the other side of that pillar, and Elena took off in that direction and whiffed, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. So, <laughs> Friar Pip, hands. Friar Pip has been so emboldened and honored by the touch of that mighty angel upon his little monk head. That he's going to wield his staff of the woodlands and create a massive wall of thorns on top of jazz hands and henchmen. Okay. <laughs> so because it appears on top of them, yeah. they're going to take 78 piercing damage or on a fail, half that. Also, okay, so what? Yeah. Also, when they move through the wall, they can, but they, they will take more damage. So if we want to start with just this initial damage and go from there. That's amazing. Okay. That is... So what is, what is, what? Your, what is your DC? Okay, and the dexterity save, my oh. DC is... Sorry, I never used D&D Beyond. I have to find it. I feel you. Uh, Coach. Mm -hmm. Where were you last time? <laughs> it's a, oh, man, it's not that high. It's a 14. Okay, so they need to roll dexterity saving throws. Yeah. Okay, I need to get my notebook out there in case I have to write anything down. Because I am also still using uh, DD Beyond for this kind of thing. Relatively new. Wow. You are not going to believe this, y'all out there who are watching. Uh, old Jazz Hands just rolled a nat 1. <laughs> Boom! Oh, there you go. <laughs> no Bob Posse up in here. Okay. Uh, let me hold on. Let me roll for the other guy. Yeah. Uh, 
What did you say your DC was? 14. Yeah. So he succeeds. Oh, okay. Jazz hands, nat one. Uh, All right. What will you do? Number two, you know. So <laughs> old jazz hands is first, and he's going to do... Wait, oh, shoot. Sorry, my bad. I rolled it wrong. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Here we go. Is that seven, right? Yeah, you said 78. Okay. <laughs> so... It's going to be 45 for Jazz Hands. Oh, my Whoa. gosh. Look at those. That's crazy. And then it's going to be half as much for the other guy. So, so 45 divided by 2. Is it rounded up? Down. 22. Okay, so 22. So 22 for the other guy. And then let's see what else this thing does. Okay, so you can, <laughs> they can move through the wall. Besides murderize? <laughs> for... For every one foot they move, they have to spend four feet of movement. And the first time the creature enters the wall on a turn or ends its turn there, it needs to make a deck save throw, or it takes 7d8 slashing damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Oh my God. So when it starts slash ends its turn there, it's going to be the same. Uh, so I do hate to disappoint you. I think that the nat one was great, and you landed a completely unexpected hit on old Jazz Hands. Um, so as your turn finishes, uh, it is now the Gith Yankee Warrior who is next to old Jazz Hands. I guess I should have given him a name, too. Uh, and you see a flash of light as he misty steps out of this wall. Oh. <laughs> Wait! But he did start his turn there, right? He did start his turn there. Okay, I think he still takes it, yeah? What? Okay, let me pull up the... Yeah, exactly. DM discretion here. It says, oh my furthermore, the first time a creature enters the wall on a turn or ends it there. So but it says enter the wall. Enter. Yeah, he was already yeah. in there. Fair. He was already Fair. in it, and he's going to get out of it. So Fair play. Uh, Fair play. I'm he, about to get yeah, murdered. He, <laughs> uh, he <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he casts a uh, Misty Step, um, which, uh, as a bonus action, and appears 30 feet closer to y'all in the middle of the temple. No. Uh, <laughs> and he's a, a little peeved about that situation, so he's going to... Uh, but that was his bonus action, so okay. he's going to run up to Friar Pip. <laughs> No. <laughs> Take a swing. I'm gonna die. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this will keep him occupied. I'll be okay for another round. I think I can throw healing at people, so I'll keep an eye out. Y'all, y'all got some healing potions. That's a thing to remember. Uh, okay. So. Oof. Suspense might kill us. Late on air update. So our DM is temporarily sidelined. <laughs> she will return momentarily uh, to the action already in progress. She's plotting Friar Pip's demise. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, we all so know he, everyone's out yeah. to get Ash. <laughs> Only because you steal stuff, man. I have not. Ash has not stolen anything. Yet. You've plotted. Well, 
will just wait for my turn and I'll enrage them adequately, I think. <laughs> nice. Distract them from... I'm just waiting to get hit so I can out. blind them because that's probably going to be where I'm actually effective based <laughs> on my, my rolls. Congratulations! They all decided to just drop dead on their own. Oh, we win. It's no fun. I got things I want to do. Yes, to our audience, our DM suggested uh, that we just carry on without her, but what would that look like? And we've decided that um, they just die and we win. Spontaneously. <laughs> Spontaneously, yeah. Yep. Spontaneous jazz hands combustion. It was a really hard to say, yeah. actually. Yeah. Hey, hey, there we go. I think, we, I think, we think you're back. Camera. That can help. Do, 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 do. We'll turn this off for a few minutes. So, uh, I don't know how much we lost, but uh, poor Friar Pip was getting... Nope. Oh no. That's yeah, because you turned off your video. video. Oh yeah. Sorry. I'm getting yelled at in many directions. There we go. <laughs> um So, so I, I took, took okay. seven slashing damage. You took seven slashing damage and unfortunately also eight psychic damage. Oh. Uh these guys are not nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh let's see. And... Really? Okay. Yeah, because he used Misty Step as his bonus, so. Okay. Sorry, folks, I think we lost our DM again. Maybe we should go to the BRB screen. <laughs> I feel like we need to have a standard uh, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties in the chat, because I've written that. <laughs>
Uh, hi, everybody. I think we're back. Sorry for that slight delay when the DM's internet or setup decides to not be cooperative. Uh, you know, I could have just, everybody apparently could have just won D&D, because that's what you do, right? You win D&D. <laughs> so, in the interim, I have got another computer set up, and hopefully we will uh, be able to do that. I'm not sure what people missed, so let's recap that last uh, that last little bit there that uh, Friar Pip created quite the target on their tiny little halfling self uh, with that wall of thorns and took uh, a little bit of a, a hefty hit there with some greatsword damage and some psychic damage. Correct. Ouch. Some ouchies. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is Rocky's turn. All right. And how far away are they... Um, there's one that is right in, pretty much right near you because, uh, I assume you and Friar Pip were still near each other. Elena and, uh, Ash are sort of near a pillar that's probably about 10 or 12 feet from you. So you have a Gith Yankee attacking your halfling companion right in your vicinity and one, uh, haranguing your other companions at a pillar nearby. All well within your movement range, so. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. The one who is, is harassing your halfling friend looks real beat up, if that makes any difference to you. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to start with an uh, object interaction and touch myself to activate full strain magic. Uh, and give myself a bonus d3 on attack rolls and ability checks. Okay. Uh, and then I rage. Ooh, we got some rage happening. And so we're going to go to the wild magic table. Okay, Tasha, and I need a D8. Okay, that's a one on the wild magic table. Shadowy tendrils lash around you. Each creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1D12 necrotic damage. Ooh, ouch. You gain 1d12 temporary hit points. Okay. So, constitution... Constitution say from the, the For both of the... The two should be within 30 feet. Yes. Uh, constitution saving throws. So many things to keep track of. Mm, that's a 13. For the guy who's right near you. And a. Ooh, and that one for the other guy. Classic hero rolls. <laughs> uh, let's see. Constitution. That was a two for the first. Oh, and a six. All right. So let me get my. So I guess those both succeeded. Okay. So no damage, but I do get my temporary hit points. Hey, temporary hit points. Always uh, a bonus. Because I get my plus three. All right. Um, ten, uh, six. All right. And I am raging, and I'm gonna go try and finish off that one by the pick. one right near you. Yep. yep. Okay. So let's attack it with my maul action. Or, uh, 17 to hit. Ooh, that does hit. That is his armor class. And... Okay. 8, 9, eight. 10, 11 damage. Cause the three 11 bonus. damage? Because the 3 okay. bonus. He drops to the ground. <laughs> he had 11 hit points. <laughs> After that wall of thorns. Right. Nice. I don't need my second attack. 
Uh, you oh, do you have, have the movement? movement? You, have, you, have, you have movement. Oh, you I do have movement because I didn't have to move. Can I mm -hmm. do that for a double? Yeah. For a multi you, okay. You can break it up. Yep. All right. Then I'm going to move oh, yeah, back the other one. Okay. Let's do it. He looks he looks uh, all fresh and not damaged, so. <laughs> all right. And we're going to attack with our maul again then. Uh, we got 13 to hit. No. That's, no, with my bonus, uh, 19. Yeah, that's going to hit. 19 to hit, and damage is 10. Okay. Decent. Yeah, does does not take him down, however. He's a little, he's a little angry about it, though. Um, okay, so, uh, Rocky has taken some, some punishing swings, and we have, uh, uh, jazz, old jazz hands, because that's what we're going to call him now, <laughs> is uh, looking mildly surprised. This is not exactly how he expected this game to go. Um, and you you sort of hear him mutter something, uh, and you see two uh, strange small creatures uh, that are flying uh, make their way onto the, for lack of a, word, for lack of a better word, battlefield. Uh, they're kind of coming in from behind him, but these are two little winged fiends um, that uh, look like they are uh, itching for a fight, but they are too far away to, to join the fight at this point. They just are coming on in. So, it's going to take us back to... Well, those guys don't get turned yet. To Ash. All right, so I am going to start off by, by singing very quietly to myself, and I'm going to cast Blade Song. <laughs> Singing to old jazz hands. <laughs> yep. So Blade Song gives me a plus four bonus to my AC, increases my walking speed by ten feet, gives me advantage on acrobatics checks, and I gain a plus four bonus on any con saves for mm -hmm. to maintain because it's a concentration spell. Okay. Uh, and then I am going to turn around and face the, uh, the goon number one, and <laughs> I'm going to attack with my, well, I'm going to pull out my rapier from my cane and attack. Okay. And that would be a 22 to hit. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hit. All right. And here we go. That would be seven damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, he's he's none too pleased about this. Uh, that, that definitely didn't feel good. Um, anything else you, you want to do? Well, I think that's really all I can do for right now. Okay. Um, as you all are kind of uh, getting uh, a sense of what this, this fight uh, might look like, uh, there is a uh, flash of light behind you, uh, and you hear a voice you recognize from more or less earlier in your day, although it feels like it's been a lot longer, um, and says, uh, I mean, you found him. That's the good news. I, I, I kind of want to see how this turns out. Do, do you need some help? And uh, behind you is, of course, Lord Keegan Rivergleam. Wait, is that Moriarty? That, mm, this doesn't sound right at all. And he starts meandering. Uh, so he's going to show up on the battlefield as well. Um, he's not really sure if you want his help yet. So he's, that, he's just going to spend his turn rambling for a minute about how confused he is that Moriarty might be a gift Yankee. Uh but he is potentially on the battlefield for you. Uh, the Gith Yankee that you uh, just took a swing at, Ash, uh, is uh, not surprisingly going to swing back at you. Because that seems like a thing he would do with his greatsword. Uh, 18 to hit. Uh, so I used a bonus action, so I can't use a reaction. No, no reactions are different. They're on your turn. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a reaction, you can use it. Uh, 
I should have shield. Okay. Let me just... You know what? Nah, it's okay. I'm going to take it. You're going to take it? 18, okay. 18 just hits. Okay. So you are going to take... This let me get out of my way. Um, ooh, 10 points of slashing damage. Okay. And 9 points of psychic damage. From the first swing on this greatsword. Okay, that was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, and then he's going to swing at you again. Uh, yeah, with a 20 to hit. Yeah. You, yeah? Not, no? Uh, yeah, I'm going to hit do shield on this one. Okay. So does that, that get you over yeah, 20? Yeah, because okay. I was at 17. Gotcha. And... So, yeah, he, he collides with your uh, magical energy that you are protecting yourself with, uh, which does seem to make him continue... To, to be angry, but that um, that will be his turn, because that's about all the Atanki warriors can do, other than some fun little spells. Um, it is uh, old Jazz Hand slash Jazzleron slash Moriarty's turn. <laughs> He's got too many names now. Um, and he notices the appearance of River Gleam behind you, and he says, Ah, I wondered when you would show up. You're not really designed to thwart me, but you know, I did want to thank you, and he, uh, you see as he, uh, holds up the cane that you know is missing from the collection, um, and, in the, uh, yeah. He's in a oh, thorn he's bush. he's in the thorn. You see the top of the cane coming out of the thorn bush? Amazing. Um, no, actually, it is, it is his turn, so he is going to misty step out of that thorn bush. Oh, well. I would have been so amused if he tried to evil monologue from the he thorn bush. He actually probably did start evil monologuing <laughs> from the thorn bush, and then he's like, "What? Well, I can't. This is not dramatic enough. Uh, <laughs> so he is going to misty step. Um, and actually, he misty steps behind the thorn wall, so mm. he's going to leave that between y'all. So you actually do kind of see him waving the cane. Um he says, once I'm rid of you, I'll just take the rest of it. The end game is so much bigger. Uh, and, um, let's see. Interestingly, that is not the right page. Are they going to bed? Let's see. Uh, yeah. And, uh, as he, uh, gestures with that cane, um, you see a moat of light come through the thorn bush. Uh, and let's see, I gotta remember. I should know this spell. <laughs> I used to use it all the time for a different character. Uh, and a fireball explodes uh, ah. in between the lot of you, and you are close enough uh, to, together. So I'm gonna need a deck saving throw from everyone, hey. including his Gith Yankee warrior, who he has decided. Uh, is potentially expendable. <laughs> yeah, it is great. Uh, halfling lucky, you can just use. Yeah. You can't stack it. Like, if you roll a one and then a second run, you can't roll it again, because I've actually had that happen. Twenty-two for me. Okay, hold on. I gotta keep track of my own characters here, too. Uh... And because your friend Lord River Gleam showed up, he may also take this hit. Uh, no. Let's see. 19. Uh, okay. So, uh, whoops. See, this is why I didn't want to use this computer. <laughs> now I'm all confused. <laughs> he is casting this at third level. Someone tell me what his DC is. Ha ha! 15. Okay, anybody who beat a 15? If I'm fire resistant. Okay, so <clears throat> let me, me roll 8d6 here. Ooh, that's a lot of, that's a lot of digital dice. Clicky claps. Ooh, a lot of ones though. Come on. There we go. Uh, so anybody who is fire resistant or succeeded on that deck saving throw is going to take 11 points of fire damage. 
Uh, anybody who failed is going to take 23. Uh, unfortunately, in the process of this, he actually just destroyed his other major ally <laughs> on the battlefield. Apparently, he was expendable. Uh, let me get my NPC's hit points in here. Because I didn't put those in, because he took some ouchies, too. How you doing there, Ash? Uh... And Briar, didn't you take some damage, too, earlier? Okay. Uh, Ash looks quite beat up right now. Quite beat up. Can I... Uh, he is not close enough to take a weapon attack on anybody. Uh, it is Elena's turn. That was the end of Old Jazz Hands. Turn. Not the end of Old Jazz Hands. He's still hanging out. <laughs> Let's see. So you're not doing to hot Ash? One. One? Okay, Ooh. I will cast Healing Word. Okay. Um, I believe you can do that as a bonus action, too. Ooh, okay, so I, bonus action. I'm pretty sure that is a bonus action for you. Nine. Excellent, Ooh. thank you. Yes. Awesome. And then I... So you still have your action, Elena, and your movement. Am I still close to... You are close to him, yeah. He's not directly uh, swinging on you, so you can move away from him without him swinging on you, but he is also close enough that you can Oh, swing yeah, I'll him. swing on him. Or move in and swing on him. Yeah, all right. Oh, no, wait, sorry. He died, didn't he? he? That's the one he just... That, that's the he one just he just... Fireballed. He just fireballed. Never mind. There's no one in your vicinity. At oh, the I was confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to keep track it's of too us many and River Gleam and <laughs> Jazz Hands, right? Oh, okay. And the two little demons that came flying Marvelous. that are flying over the wall and headed in your direction. Um, so, yeah. So, Elena, you uh, you have movement and an action, but you have no enemy in your vicinity. I will send the humun homunculus up to distract the fiends. Okay. <laughs> Let these guys die. <laughs> Well, she can make one more. For yeah, before I can rest. make one more, and that his action will probably be movement, so I don't have to worry about his death until the next round. <laughs> uh, Friar Pip, it is your turn. Okay. Um, thorn wall, you <laughs> honestly, Friar Pip is gonna say big oof with that fireball. Drop okay. the thorn wall and then erect another one on. Jazz hands. Because I have another charge, so why not? Well, okay. Uh, sure, that's that's fine. <laughs> Dexterity saving throw. Yeah, it's only a 14 DC. Okay, so not super high. Uh, he did make it. With okay. a, yeah, right, right on the button. So. Okay, so it's gonna be half of this. Okay. Uh... So it's going to be 14 points of damage. Okay. And then with my bonus action, I am going to use Balm of the Summer Court and use, yeah, I think I'm going to use two of my energy pool. Um, and so then I'll get 2d6 uh, plus two temporary hit points. Okay. Roll, roll that Roller. up. Yes, and I could do that for you guys, too. I I was just pretty hurt, and Ash just got healed. Okay, so that person is no longer alive. Uh, Rocky, it is your turn. You have uh, old jazz hands behind a thorn wall, some... 50 plus feet away and two small um, demon like things uh, coming down in this general direction but it hasn't been their turn yet so they haven't gotten to y'all alright um, I'm gonna move toward to the closest of the demon things okay and attack 
with my mom. Um, okay, yeah, they're coming down from the sky, so oh, I'm going to say you'd be able to... I can throw a javelin if you... Yeah, because they're, they're coming in from high, so I don't think you could quite reach them yet. But yes, if you would like to javelin them, that I would fun. like to javelin them. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, remind me how to use a ranged weapon. Uh, you should have a, 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 a plus button to roll for hitting. Same. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It just operates on a different... Sometimes it just operates on a different stat. Okay, 17. Oh, yeah, that for sure hits him. All right. And uh, 7 damage with the 3 bonus. Oh, he drops out of the sky. Didn't even have a chance. All right. To do anything second mean. attack on the other one, then. <laughs> Taking all my fun. <laughs> Ooh. 22. Yep, that definitely hits. And 11. Yep, and that one drops out of the sky. You're, <laughs> You're welcome. Elena's homunculus is like, what? It's like, I'm here to help. <laughs> oh, no, just, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ash, it is your turn. All right, so I got hit last time, and I should have rolled a con saving throw. For my oh, for your concentration. Concentration check. Um, so seventeen plus four, so twenty-one. So I okay. I I assume I'm keeping it up. I forgot how much damage you took, but that should be more than enough to cover it. Yes. Okay. Um. So so there's... you have. You have old jazz hands in a second thorn wall. <laughs> can't see him though, can we? No, you can't. How far away is the thorn the thorn wall? From you, it was sixty feet. Then he moved back, but you were further forward. Uh, math is hard, especially when we're doing theater of the mind. <laughs> I would say you're still about 60 feet because he backed up and you had moved, but you had moved forward at one point. So you're, you're looking at 60 feet. Okay. Um, so I want to move forward and I've got 40 feet of movement now. Okay. Um, but da, 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 da. But you're gonna run into a th how how long is that thorn wall, Friar Pip? Is it a contained thing or is it running a long distance? It is Does running. Does it have to go have to go around? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's um it's in a line. It's a sixty foot line. Um, sorry. Let me oh wow. The... Yeah, and it's so ten feet pretty... tall. Okay, so y'all are like cut off basically because you have to go into the jungle and run around this wall basically. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I don't want to get to him. I want to get okay. I want to get up to the thorn wall and kind of be and kind of well, yeah. I'm gonna go up to the thorn wall, look for some place, and hide. Mm. Okay. Go ahead and uh, roll a, a stealth check there. Stealth check. Come on, there. Uh... That would be a sixteen. Okay. Noted. And I'm going to ready a crossbow, or not crossbow, short bow, uh, for when I see, or if I see him up here. Okay, on this, on the front side of the wall that you all are on. Right. Smart. Yep. Got it. Uh, it is to... Uh, River Gleam, who says, I, I don't know what's taking all of you so long. I want my stuff back. Let's just finish him. Uh, and let me look at some spells that I don't really know for a <laughs> Oh, I feel that so hard <laughs> as a DM. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I have everything prepped. Did you yep. even read yep. the NPC spells? Never, no. nope, never played a wizard. Why would I? <laughs> Why would I read the spells? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, he's gonna cast uh, Mordenkind and Sword, because why not? That sounds like fun. Uh, and this is where you watch the DM uh, fight with myself. <laughs> uh, lucky him, he rolled a nat 20. Ooh. So, this would be... I didn't make a ruling about whether we were gonna use brutal critical rolls. Um, so I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna roll all my damage dice twice. And, uh, whoops, try not to drop my laptop while I'm juggling. What's the spell he cast? Uh, it's the seventh level Mordenkind and Sword. It creates, a, like, a sword, um, within 60 feet, so he has essentially generated a sword on the other side of this wall. Mm -hmm. Uh. A force sword. Yeah, it's a force sword. So it does, um, 3d10. Wow. Force damage. Uh, so that was 29 damage to Ooh. Moriarty. Nice. Slash old jazz hands. <laughs> Whoops. How's he looking here? Uh, let me let me get this number in and I will tell you. Not that well, he's not looking good, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> not that we can see, though. Not that you can see, because he oh, is good. behind a thorn wall. Uh, so River Gleam does this, and it's actually a concentration spell, so you can sort of see the glow of this sword um, behind the wall. It's kind of given off some light. Um, and think of this as, like, a spiritual weapon, but for wizards at a high level. Because <laughs> he can just keep concentrating on it and using it. Uh, and he says, just... Give me back my stuff. You ruined the legend. You ruined the stories. I want my stuff back. Uh, and he's kind of throwing a little fit behind you all. But it was a damaging fit, so... <laughs> uh, that character is deceased. Um, you do... It's it's Moriarty slash old jazz hand slash uh, Jazlyn's turn. And you hear him say he misty steps out of the wall behind it <laughs> again. Um, mark that down. And uh, he yells back and says, I don't have time for this. There's a, plenty of prizes out there. I don't need any of this. Um, just move along and I'll move along and we can forget all this happened. Um, and you see uh, another moat of light shoot out through the thorn wall, the new thorn wall, as he casts fireball again. Because it seemed oh. to work really well last time. <laughs> we should have moved. Ash moved. <laughs> and, and Ash moved, but all the I rest moved. of you are still... Uh, oh, okay. By the... That's right. That's good. So he's going to hit, the, he's going to aim for the most people, though, which is going to be uh, Elena and Friar Pip and uh, River Gleam, because y'all are still close enough together. So, uh... Go ahead and roll your deck save again. Okay. Fire okay. resistant. Yep. Nice. Good. Yeah, his his he's a fifteen. Uh, so what did I say this was? Eighty six. Once again should know this spell. I used to use it a lot. Clickety clacks. Uh, so, uh, Elena, you have fire resistance, so you're going to take... I actually rolled a 23 again. That's weird. The two fireballs I fired, oh. both 20, 23 damage. Um, so, Elena, you're going to take 11. So, I, I did roll my fire. deck save, and I rolled a 22. Okay. You still take half still damage take, on okay. a fireball. 11. But you but take, she takes a quarter damage, You take right? a quarter of the damage. You take half because you succeeded. So you take five. five. Okay. Cool. Yeah, math. Um, fire Pip, that probably probably didn't feel so good. No. No, it did not. <laughs> uh, uh, River Gleam barely made that. But he came into this fight a little late, so. Uh, but yeah, he is starting to hit the point of 
uh, negotiation. He doesn't like the way this, this fight has been going, and he is suggesting that if you all are willing to part ways, he will go his way and you can go yours. Whether or not you wish to believe that. Uh, and Elena, it is your turn. Uh, so how you looking? How you looking, Friar Pip? I'm not looking great, but I can heal myself. So if you want to like kill the baddie or heal someone else, is everyone else doing okay? We should all have some potions handy too. Mm -hmm. Y'all have potions, at least one apiece. Some of you might even have two from the last session. Uh, so I. I mean, good. I don't look great, but yeah, I have potions, so. Or you could negotiate with a mastermind for, you know, whatever he has to offer. <laughs> yeah, charisma is not my strong suit. I don't really like people, I just want the thing so we can go home. Um, I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. Just real quick. Uh, as I rolled 2 plus 3 plus 3, so 8. Get 8 back. Okay. Looking a little less terrible. And I, I'm going to follow uh, Ash's leadership and go to another part of the hedge on the opposite <laughs> side. Opposite side? And, okay. And uh, get ready to cast Flaming Spear. Okay. So, word of warning, if you're readying that as an action and he does not appear, you will have used the spell slot. So it's up to you. You can totally do that. But word of warning, that is the, the situation. With I think he's going to appear. Um, I'll risk I'll risk it. <laughs> got to risk okay. it to get the I'm biscuit. I'm just saying, that's up to you. I, I want to be clear about expectation. <laughs> uh, Friar Pip, it is your turn. Friar Pip. Throw a ball in there? <laughs> no, I definitely don't. <laughs> um, but I'm going to drop the current thorn wall so he does appear to, um, like, they can oh. see him now. Yeah. So we have two held actions. Uh, Ash, you are up first. You were holding a short bow attack. Yep. So that's 21 okay. to hit. Uh, yep, that hits. Okay. And that's five damage. Okay. And then uh, Elena, you were holding that spell. And remind me, I already forgot which one Flaming it was. Spear. Ah, okay. What do I need to do? Uh, You're going to make a big flaming sphere appear probably on top of me. Yes. And I have to roll some sort of check. I'm trying to get to your character sheet because yep, I didn't yep, have everything sorry. opened after I... Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the spear must, must make a dex save. Doesn't do any initial damage? That seems, that seems silly. odd. Welcome to we figure out how this effects. spell works. <laughs> uh, any creature that ends its turn within five feet must make a dex saving throw. Hmm, okay. So it actually does not do any initial damage. Well, that's not helpful. <laughs> this is a really good spell if you want to like set something on fire in multiple places, but um Yeah, because uh, he has to end his turn within five feet of it. So, a flaming spear, and I'm... So, I, why, why wouldn't I be able to throw it at him? It says 60 foot range. Oh, it's like a 10 foot... It's big. It's, it's, not, it's not a little thing. It's like a... Phew. Okay. So, I need to Plus be closer five. to him. No, you're you're within range, but it only it only does damage at the end of his of the creature who's if he's within five feet okay. of it. So because of the timing on this, he'll have a chance to move away before he ends his turn there. And I promise he's probably not going to end his turn standing next to the flaming ball of fire. <laughs> I think what's cool about it is its bonus actions because you is. can move it's it around and like ram it into people. Yeah, if you're in a big fight. Well. <laughs> okay, still learning. So that was useless, but or it was cool. If you would like to burn a house down? <laughs> well, next turn you can move it around. Yeah. Uh, so that was Elena. Uh, Friar Pip, you took down that wall. Was that your action to do? No. Or okay. No. So what else have you got? Because we resolved our open fights here. 
Yeah, so I'm going to... Is anyone on death's door? Otherwise, I'm going to use this bonus action to heal myself. I'm good. Okay, cool. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the exact same thing with my bonus action, uh, rolling those 2d6 to heal some. Okay. Um, Yes, he is. He's wearing half plate armor. <laughs> oh, okay. I got a note from our producer that we lost you on the stream again, so I want to I want to catch up our viewers. Uh, but I don't know where they what they missed because I don't know when that message popped up. Yeah, that's exactly why we ran into technical problems. So recap for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, recap real quick as Friar Pip's turn is still happening and we're trying to repair the technical difficulties. Uh, yes, the thorn wall has come down uh, and that resulted in two held uh, actions being uh, released. So our unfortunate old jazz hands. Uh, Jazlyn took a little bit more damage from a short bow, uh, has for the moment dodged some extraneous fire damage and we are working on, uh, Friar Pip is working on, uh, well, healed up some damage. And while we work on getting Friar Pip back, uh, was working on a plan of action for an actual action. Now, um, uh, I see it recording. Okay. So, um, I'm going to roll physical dice so it doesn't crash again. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> Apparently we're all overloading the system. Um, and I'm going to cast heat metal on Jazz yes. Hands metal. Yes, we, the important question was, is uh, old Jazz Hands wearing metal? Which, yes. Um, I'm casting it at a third level because I have that slot. Oof, okay. Um, so he takes... Um, 3d8 fire damage when I cast the spell, and then I can do a bonus action to give the damage again on my other turns. So, okay. oh, and then there's also a constitution saving throw bit, but we can do that Constitution first. saving throw, okay. Um, I'm prepare to Okay, so that's going to be 11 plus 4, okay, so it's going to be 15 damage. Okay. And then, um, constitution save, if you... Yep, 25. Ooh, okay, passes, so no yeah. no worries. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's one of the big things for this character, so... Yeah, okay, he, uh, and that's okay. my turn. <laughs> he, I will say, he looks very bad. Like, very bad. He has, uh, got a lot of thorn damage. Uh, <laughs> now some, ouch, why is my armor burning me down? <laughs> <laughs> um, and for those of you who don't play D anD D, you can't just get out of your armor real fast. That's a real process. So this is a, a nasty spell sometimes. Um, so we are to Rocky. All right, and let's see. So I'm what thirty feet from Jazz Hands or so? So somewhere in that vicinity. All right. Yes. And he's got a flaming spear hanging out in the vicinity. There so. is a flaming spear on one side of him, but you could <laughs> potentially skirt around the other side. Uh, uh, or as long as you don't end your turn standing directly next to it, you should be fine. Um, yeah, I would like to move so that I am adjacent to him, but more than five feet from the flaming spear. Got it. And attack with the maul. <laughs> okay. seven to hit Ooh, that is not not gonna be a hit let's Sorry. try that again <laughs> but yes <laughs> raging barbarians <laughs> really eight. <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh maybe it's this flaming sphere and the more heat radiating off of him from the hot metal 
He just seems to be uh, a little out of your grasp at the moment. Um, let's see. That was everybody else's turn. Uh, Ash, it is your turn. Uh, he's looking pretty beat he's, up. He's looking real beat up. He's got uh, your uh, barbarian friend Rocky on one side, a giant flaming sphere on the other. <laughs> I'll... All I can hear is Johnny Cash in my head right now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a burning sphere of fire? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you you do hear River Gleam behind you going, I just, just finish him. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... This guy really wants his stuff back. <laughs> uh, Ash is going to uh, touch the, the, the crystal uh, on the hilt of his sword. Mm -hmm. And cast chromatic orb nice. at Jazz Hands. Okay. So, okay. Did that go through? Okay. I didn't see anything, but All right, I'll, it could be. I'll tear up this. Oh, come on. That's a 10. You choose, uh, yeah, so, okay, so you have to hit, okay, yeah, uh, so, 10 is not gonna cut it. Okay, uh, bonus action. Yep. Uh, I'll try the old-fashioned way, and <laughs> just... Stabby way, or <laughs> well, like shooty way? I, 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 mm -hmm. how far away would he be? Uh, you had started moving in the direction of the thorn wall, but you went off to one side, yeah. so, um, math, uh, would be there. Um, I don't think you could get to him in a move. He's under 60 feet from you, we determined on the last, or he was about 60 feet from you on the last turn, so, so depending on how far out you went. I'll just do, I'll just do short bow. Yeah. Okay. Um, come on. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> A natural one for six. Okay. Um, so, next up is uh, River Gleam, who is standing behind you all. Uh, and he is actually still. Uh, oh, I forgot. He needed to roll a concentration check earlier as well because he took some fireball damage. Uh, which he would have passed because that was a 19. So he is still actually concentrating on this giant sword the that sword. is in the air. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and uh, try to hit with that. People people who play D&D with me know that I am the worst roller ever. Apparently when I play NPCs, I can roll two nat 20s in a row. Yay! Round. Good job, River Gleam. <laughs> I really didn't want the NPC to get the kill, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so how do you so, want to deal with this? Uh, yeah, I don't know how I want to do this, because I wasn't planning on it. I was going to give it to somebody else. Uh, but as it is, this giant uh, sword comes down out of the sky, and, uh, well, we don't want to get... This is a family-friendly stream. Uh, <laughs> but we will say uh, River Gleam, quite enraged about the theft of his collection and not wanting to have any sort of recurrence of this, uh, very cleanly will go for the head slice. Uh, with this giant sword, which then dissipates. Uh, and he will uh, start running in that general direction to acquire what he believes are the two items that would still be out there. Not Well, he, th he thinks there's still three out there, plus the others. So, let's, let's resolve this game, because we have gone way over time. Um, so yes, uh, if you, you see River Gleam heading for the body, uh, because he is, of course, concerned about his materials. Are all of you also heading in that direction? or I'll dismiss the flaming spear now uh, so that nobody accidentally <laughs> walks too close to it. Rocky's already there, we yes, know. Yes, <laughs> but hopefully still at least five feet away. So I'll just kind of whoop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm already starting to try to pick through the body and get any artifacts before Ash finds his sticky fingers over here. Um, okay, so yeah, basically what you, you saw that, um, uh, 
old jazz hands had uh, a weapon on him um but he was also casting uh what you actually also find on him is a uh bag on his hip um that contains the artifacts that were still missing so the three that were not recovered before uh the three the the uh Two, they, they, no, you recovered one of those. <laughs> this, is, this got weird. Um, so you've recovered the circlet, which he does not know yet. So he has recovered now the walking stick and the violin and some other items that you did not retrieve on your first mission. You guys have the box and the circlet, but he does not yet know that. So he is getting back the five of the seven that were missing. Um, it, that were in this particular uh, bag of holding, as it were. And uh, he turns to you all and he says, did you, did you find the others? This isn't all of them. Yes. Gosh. I told I'm you, the money doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, we did. And I stare pointedly at Ash. I'm pointing too. Okay, number one, <laughs> I didn't have the tiara last all I had was the box, and I'll, Ash will just drop it. Wait, who took okay. the tiara? Who has this? Does uh, oh, Fire no, Pit still have this? I know I did take it off. I have a stone. But, but she had the you stone. have one of the stones. Yeah, I'll set the tiara uh, on top of the box. I'm okay. keeping the key though. Just okay. Well, he didn't. He right? did not I know, know what I, was in the box. I'm just being very clear since. Apparently everyone thinks you're <laughs> you're a thief. I wonder why. Uh, um, he notices the missing uh, stones in the circlet, and he says, "Well, there were three missing before." Um, and, and Friar Pip will offer up the final stone, okay, and say, "The good angel told me that this was partially your fault. Be less pesky." I will take my money now and go and expand my apiary and give her the stone. I love that. Uh, words of wisdom from Friar Pip. Uh, be less pesky. Uh, yeah, so he takes the stone. Uh, he says, perhaps uh, this is not the place to negotiate. Uh, it looks like you all might want to sit down. Uh, and I presume uh, he looks some of you over that we have to discuss the payment form also we all know nessa is going to want her cut um but uh we uh we can you essentially you can use the amulet to get all of you home much in the way you it has taken you back to neverwinter once before um and uh i don't know that anybody wants to watch us negotiate at 10 20 at night but suffice to say you're pretty much going to be able to name your price on a lot of this so whatever money prior pip wants for apiary purposes <laughs> I, I will say for ash's purposes he will offer you uh the the amulet as right. uh, among other things if you want to discuss money but he would be now that he has his collection back and he does not intend to see this sort of travesty happen again he would argue that he has no use for it and uh, can undo some of what he did to it so that it will be uh, much as its original intention as an amulet of the planes, not one that only takes you to specific random items, if that would be something you would desire. Ash will take the, take the amulet. not something you would desire, I would enjoy a trip back to our board. <laughs> I mean, maybe your friend Ash can take you back there because he's got a way to go now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can also, uh, of course, su secure the funds to have uh, some cleric of some sort or other uh, do that get rid of evil and good spell on <laughs> poor Rocky. <laughs> um, but yeah. That is that has been our uh, adventure of the Artifacts Heist Part Two. That was awesome. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. <laughs> it was fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. I definitely am always surprised where people get stuck, and I was like, oh my, okay, we haven't. <laughs> uh, if we when we do roll call, we'll talk about some of the things we didn't get to do because there were some other things in there. But, uh, yeah, definitely okay. some other things. 
Um, so uh, I don't know if we're going to raid anywhere, so I'll, well, I'll spin for time for a second while I find that out from, from our amazing producer, Kayla. Thank you. And uh, I believe Anthony uh, was running chat for us tonight, so thank you for that, Anthony. Um, this is the last planned role of play for the spring semester for us. There is going to be some summer programming that will be coming. We're going to be trying out some new things, uh, maybe running some multi-shot or streaming some other games and potentially some other stuff. Uh, so we are happy to hear from you if you're interested in knowing more about what we're doing um, or wanting to get involved. Uh, hopefully our chat moderator can drop the link and the email in there because if you are interested in getting involved and want to reach out to us and you are part of the university community or the local community or work in libraries and archives in general, uh, we are interested in having you come and join us to play or DM. Uh, and if you, I believe it is roleofplay-g at vt.email or vt.edu. Uh, and also there should be a bit.ly link in the chat that will also help with that uh, to learn more about our role of play. Uh, next week, as usual, on Wednesday at 2.30, there will be an episode of Archival Adventures uh, hosted by Anthony. And I can't remember off the top of my head what he's going to be looking at, but I know he's going to be focusing on gardening materials for the month of May. Uh, so there'll be some stuff related to that. Uh, next Thursday will be a roll call episode for Hobbit Heist, which I ran uh, two weeks ago. Um, so we will talk about our Hobbit-themed Honey Heist game and how that adventure went as well. And then there should be a roll call for this episode, but I'm not quite sure what the schedule will be on that, so stay tuned. Um, you can always find out more about that um, on our Twitch channel, BTUL Studios which you're already watching. Ah, okay, we are going to raid Pixel Circus. So I wanna thank all of uh, the players this evening for surviving another one of my new adventures into DMing 5e. <laughs> um, and we will head off to raid Pixel Circus when we're ready to. And thanks for the technical support. We couldn't do it yes, without you all. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we had some technical issues. We appreciate your patience. It, it always happens. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it doesn't because it always happens. <laughs> So I, w I was Muppet Wave at the end. That's like my thing. <laughs> awesome. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Okay. I'm not sure if we are.